renew their football rivalry that goes back to 1888. This time first in the Coastal Division and the Victory Bell Trophy at stake. Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. Alongside Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Matvick, Allison Williams down on the field, and Matt, both of these head coaches have done a great job in their respective situations. David Cutcliffe, the head coach at Duke. There is Larry Fedora, the head coach at North Carolina, in his first year. You know, Larry Fedora's challenge was different from David Cutcliffe's. He walked into a relatively good situation. Playmakers on his football team. He had to make sure that they stayed in the program, though. When the NCAA sanctions came down, they could have left. Larry Fedora's a charismatic guy. He kept his seniors, all 19 of them, including Kevin Reddick. And it has come in handy so far this season. They're banned from postseason play, but they can still unofficially win the Coastal Division, and that's what they're gunning for this season. Duke has won the toss. They have deferred to the second half, so North Carolina will get the football first. We'll get a chance to see Giovanni Bernard, outstanding running back for North Carolina right away. 63 degrees, clear skies, calm winds. And a near capacity crowd here at Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham. Holds about 34,000, very close to a sellout. And we're underway. John Tapley and Romar Morris back deep. It's Tapley on the return. And it's a good one, out across the 25 and wrangled down at the 27-yard line. That is a 24-yard return for Sean Tapley. And here comes Bryn Renner, starting quarterback for North Carolina, adjusting well to Larry Fedora's new spread offense. Well, there's some question marks about Bryn Renner and whether or not he had the ability to adjust to such an up-tempo attack, one that they want to be even faster paced than it's been so far this season and he's thrived under this new offensive philosophy. First play from scrimmage out of the gun. Renner wants to throw and he does to the flat. It's A.J. Blue, the backup running back to Gio Bernard. Makes the catch and picks up seven. David Helton on the tackle. Blue is having his most productive season as a Tar Heel. You see North Carolina, here it is, right over the ball again, right over to snap the ball for the second play. And then they'll look over to the sideline. It's a multiple tempo offense. It's not like they're in a two minute drill with a sense of urgency the entire game. Second down and three. And the first carry of the game for Gio Bernard. And he is gonna be close to a first down. Looks like he got it. Boy, he has been outstanding and critical for the success of North Carolina Stitch. When you look at their wins and losses, they've lost two ball games. Incidentally, they didn't have Giovanni Bernard's services available versus Wake Forest or Louisville. He's a key component of what they do offensively. On first down, Renner pumps a couple of times, and now he takes off. Good shot across the 40-yard line to about the 41, a pickup of three. As Kenny Ananicki, the defensive end, who's had a good year defensively for Duke, makes the tackle. And Renner is down. Well, this D Duke defense is the best pressure defense in the ACC. 18 sacks. They spent a lot of time in backfields. You see on a Nicky. I think he came down. And I don't know if he just got the wind knocked out of him. Sometimes when you see the ball in their solar plexus. But look at on a Nicky. Plays off the cut block. And then he lands flush right on Renner's back. I think there's a chance if it's not a shoulder injury. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. And regardless, that is a hold your breath type of moment for Larry Fedora. We talk about what they need out of the quarterback position. They want him to distribute. They want him to protect the football. And you see there, Marquise Williams. You know, he's a guy who's a, he's a dual threat type of a guy. When Larry Fedora got this job, there was some talk that perhaps maybe he would be better suited for the offense, you see there, Bryn Renner, he just falls right I on the football. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, he fell, he fell right on the football and uh, maybe knocked the wind out of him. And good to see him up on his feet. Yeah, I think we'll see Renner back in there tonight. Regardless, I think we'll be out for a play. You get Marquise Williams in there. 
Well, already tonight, what we've seen, and this is a key for this Duke defense to make sure that they keep the ball in Renner's hands in the run game. Welcome, everybody, to Durham, North Carolina. Tonight, North Carolina and Duke playing for the victory bell and first place in the Coastal Division of the ACC at stake. Bad news for North Carolina. Their starting quarterback, Bryn Renner, has just left the field. We don't think it's serious, but he's been knocked out of the game for now. Marquise Williams in at quarterback and a big defensive play for Duke. Austin Gamble into the backfield. Here's Bryn Renner. This is what happened moments ago, Matt. You see, on and Nikki, Ken on and Nikki coming in and collapsing on Bryn Renner. You know, we're speculating it's just getting the wind knocked out of him. As it is, we see Marquise Williams, the backup quarterback, in there for the Tar Heels. Here's Williams on third down at six, dumps it off short. Caught by Giovanni Bernard. He is a great receiver, a great runner in the secondary, and he gets inside the 20-yard line of Duke. You see some of the athleticism. Giovanni Bernard does a great job. Marquise Williams waits for the rush to get upfield. Bernard is a make you miss kind of guy. Look at the big daddy out in front. That's Jonathan Cooper. About to be the second best offensive lineman eligible for the draft. Bryn Renner back in the game for North Carolina. Good news for Tar Heels fans. Here's Bernard bouncing it to the outside. Inside the 10 and out at the 9. When we visited with David Cutcliffe. He said you got to be able to take a punch. Already a big play in the screen game. Can Blue Duke rally on defense and take a punch something they haven't been able to do in their two losses this season versus Stanford and Virginia Tech and they get hit with a big play. AJ Blue in the backfield Renner who was out for a couple of plays back in as the starting quarterback for North Carolina left after apparently having the wind knocked out of him first down and goal here opening series for the Tar Heels. He'll throw to the end zone and it's caught Complete. It was caught out of bounds by Eric Heisman. What a game in front of us. As North Carolina State beats Maryland, they hit a field goal with 32 seconds left, and then Maryland bangs one off the goalpost. And North Carolina State playing good football right now, beating Florida State last week and a big win on the road here tonight. And a good one here in Durham. As A.J. Blue takes the handoff, goes straight up the middle to the five. He's going to bring up third down and goal. And Matt Duke with a win here tonight, bowl eligible for the first time in a long time. And, and quite a bit of urgency for that man, David Cutcliffe, knowing that he needs a victory here tonight. The remaining teams on his schedule, he is winless in his previous four seasons here at Duke versus those teams. Ninth play of the drive. It started at the North Carolina 27. Third down and goal from the five. Blue in the backfield with Bryn Renner. Duke showing pressure. They come. Renner in trouble, being chased. Nowhere to go. He stumbles and falls back to the 13-yard line. Justin Fox was all over Bryn Renner, and that's going to bring a fourth down. We talked with defensive coordinator Jim Knowles. He said, I got to pick my moments from the pressure. They brought inside pressure, brought the linebackers, but it's Justin Fox who's playing with one hand effectively. You see there, he's got his hand covered with a uh, wrap tonight. Does an excellent job of staying with Renner. He's a pretty mobile guy, but he's not able to escape contain there. There's Casey Barth, the senior kicker from 30 yards out. And North Carolina gets on the board first. Good opening drive. And David Cutcliffe happy that his defense held him to three. We're back at Durham right after this. I play Matt Vick alongside Matt Stinchcomb. Allison Williams down on the field. Matt, we talked about the job David Cutcliffe has done in his five years here at Duke. Has him on the cusp of bowl eligibility. Larry Fedora doing an equally good job at North Carolina in year one, despite the fact they have nothing to play for. Yeah, they, they don't, but they do. I mean, it's unofficial, but what Larry Fedora wants his team to recognize is that they can win the Coastal Division if unofficially. There's still something to play for in year one under Larry Fedora, and they've been very balanced, and it's been helpful, obviously, to get a healthy Giovanni Bernard 
back in this fed spread offense. They've proven to be very explosive the past two weeks. Here's Lee Butler on the return for Duke. And he gets close to the 30-yard line as we go down to Allison. Guys, UNC Duke, one of the best rivalries in sports, but the football play has lacked the competitive component we see on the basketball court. UNC has won the victory bell here, 21 of the past 22 seasons, including eight straight, but there's a different field this time. Both teams have winning records. There's a belief now around Duke football. Head coach David Cutcliffe congratulated his Blue Devils on being in a position to play a big game, but he said they have to make sure they go up and execute for the full 60 minutes. Some good news on the injury front guys for the Blue Devils as well. Thank you Allison as Juwan Thompson takes the first carry of the night picks up four yards for the Blue Devils. The 100th year of college football at Duke with just eight bowl trips. There, there is a different vibe here Stinch and that man deserves a lot of credit. Well he said when he came here the new athletic director Kevin White was setting the tone for future success in the athletic department for the football program. He's got the resources that he thinks he needs to build towards year in, year out competitiveness for a program that hasn't been that before he came. Sean Renfrey, the starting quarterback, hands off to Thompson. And he's going to get one yard as Gene Robinson makes the tackle. There's Renfrey, the veteran quarterback of Duke, third year starter. One of the most accurate passers in college football at just shy of 70% and an average of 253 yards passing per game. Fifth year senior. They put a lot of leadership on his shoulders, and he's been re responding well. Third down and five for Duke. Opening series for the Blue Devils. And got a penalty flag. Team. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense, number 17. Five yards, still third down. On the sophomore tight end, Isaac Blakeney. Duke took eight penalties last week, a season high. Certainly a concern for David Cutcliffe. And last week, they were also four of 13 on third down. Lots of third and long. They had third and five, which is somewhat manageable. That penalty obviously puts them way behind the down and distance. Here they go on third and 10. Run action, pass, tipped and intercepted. Picked off at the 45. That's Darian Rankin, still on his feet. Cuts back to the middle as a flag flies, and he gets down to the nine-yard line. Darian Rankin getting the start because Sam Smiley is suffering a turf toe. And a 38-yard return after the interception. We'll see if this play stands. Personal five, defense, number 48. 15 yards, automatic first down. And it will not stand as it's a penalty on Kevin Reddick, the middle linebacker for North Carolina. And we talk about penalties for Duke. Boy, they have been a real problem for North Carolina the last couple of weeks, man. You look at North Carolina, and once again, you see Larry Fedora. You know, he can't believe yet another call. But look at this, 61 penalties, obviously the most in the ACC, one of the worst in the country. Looking at 77 yards a game that you're basically forfeiting. It cost them in the red zone, and it's going to cost them a turnover and a legit scoring opportunity. You see it there. You can't hit a quarterback late. You can't hit him high. Big break for Duke. First and 10. Here's Thompson. And he's dragged down just short of midfield as we take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Lee Jeans for Duke. Well, it'll come as no surprise. Connor Vernon, the ACC's leading receiver in reception. Jameson Crowder has emerged as a big play receiver for Duke. And then Walt Canty, he's the quarterback of their defense. They allow him to call his own blitzes at times. He might need to versus this potent rushing attack in North Carolina. Second down and eight. Here's Sean Renfrey. Clean pocket, throw complete, caught at the 40, and down to the 31 is David Reeves. The impressive looking tight end. He's a redshirt freshman, picks up 18 on the play, and North Carolina's in business here. They are, and you can see them now starting to tempo the ball. They're back over it and wanting to snap quickly. There's Josh Sneed now in the backfield. 
And he dives ahead for about four. I misspoke. I said North Carolina in business. I mean Duke is knocking on the door here. They average 35.3 points per game. They're on pace for a school record. This offense really looks good this season. And you'll notice they don't huddle either, but it's more to prevent personnel changes than it is to run a ton of plays like North Carolina. Play fake, Renfrey goes to the outside and his favorite target, there's Connor Vernon. The ACC's all-time leader in receptions, give him 13, a first down as Duke is in the red zone. You see Connor Vernon, and he's working on Jabari Price. He's an excellent route runner, but he, they love his speed and obviously excellent hands. And now back to the ground and a big hole for Josh Snead. Their sophomore out of Smithfield, North Carolina. He gains 13, first down and goal from the two. And you see him find a ton of room on the right side of Duke's offensive line. So North Carolina's got a true freshman, and Jesse Rogers gets caught up field. And Josh Sneed in this run game is working for Duke, something they said they had to do. Anthony Boone comes in to take the snap at quarterback as Renfrey lines up at the bottom of your screen. And Sneed's in the backfield. Boone will keep it. To the end zone, touchdown Duke. A very impressive response. After the drive that produced three for North Carolina, Duke's on the board for the first time, and they have the lead. And what a swing of events in Duke's favor. You go from an interception, setting up North Carolina in scoring territory, negated by a penalty by Kevin Reddick. Goes up top and hits Sean Renfrey. Duke capitalizes on that opportunity. Goes right down the football field. And they do an excellent job running the football on the ground. That's exactly what they need to do to be able to be explosive on the outside versus the secondary to tag difficulty. And here's the late hit. This is what gave them the opportunity to maintain possession. And now Duke is up 7-3 over North Carolina. the corner. Anthony Boone with a touchdown run, capping a Duke drive, an impressive one at that. Now we'll see the North Carolina offense again. They'll start at the 25, and let's take a look at the impact players presented by Lee Jeans. Well, this will come as no surprise to anyone that Giovanni Bernard, the difference in the win-loss record had been whether or not he's in the lineup for North Carolina, but he runs off and behind his big left guard, Jonathan Cooper. We saw him out front on that big screen pass that they hit that led to a field goal. And Kevin Reddick, they were happy to get him back. It was probably Larry Fedora's most important recruiting job, keeping him in the program. Obviously had that big personal foul that led yeah. to a scoring drive and a touchdown for Duke. Regardless, I he get opportunities to redeem himself here tonight. And he says the heart and soul of that defense. Sometimes mistakes happen. Short pass. After the 30-yard line, that's Gio Bernard. I'll tell you what, he's as good a receiver as he is a runner. Doesn't get as much credit for that. But we've seen him make some great receiving plays. Great catch last week on fourth down versus Miami. Here they go, quick strike. It's going to be a loss on the play of the yard as runners complete. But stepping up and making a nice tackle is Ross Cockrell. One of the best corners in the nation. Leads the ACC in pass breakups. He's fun to watch. It's a loss of one for North Carolina. Third down and six. Bernard in the backfield. Santapoli in motion. And a flag. And they whistled the play dead. Jeff Heiser is our referee tonight. Try to snap. Ball start. Offense. Number 73. Five yards. Still third down. Brennan Williams considered to be one of the top tackles available for the NFL draft in April. Makes a mistake here. You see him, he's got Josh Wilter right over. He can't flinch, he can't move at all. That's one of the things in hurry up offenses. You get over the ball, and you have to wait for that snap sometimes. Third down and 11. Renner steps up in the pocket. Nearly picked off, and then almost caught and dropped. Eric Ebron, the tight end, took it away from the defender. Good battle in the secondary. to bring up fourth down, and North Carolina will have to kick. 
I'll tell you what, Brent Renner is lucky this one isn't going the other way for a score. Well, credit Duke right now doing an excellent job bottling up this high-octane North Carolina offense, forcing a punt. What have we seen? Ross Cockrell making his presence felt on the edge. Duke likes their secondary versus North Carolina's playmakers outside. Well, you're right about that. David Cutcliffe couldn't say enough about it. His men in the secondary. Tommy Hibbert's kick is short, but it takes a nice North Carolina roll. All the way to the 31-yard line. And that's where Duke will go to work for its second series. Beautiful touchdown drive on their first. They lead it 7-3 here in Durham. 2009, he had Duke on the cusp of bowl eligibility, but they lost their last four games. With five left, including tonight, Things are looking promising now. Yeah, he likes where this program is, and you can't be more than happy than where they are. Now, you would have thought the way they were playing, as well as they played versus Virginia, could they string two big victories back-to-back -back versus Virginia Tech? They jumped out to a lead, and then you look at what's left on their schedule after they dropped the game versus Virginia Tech. Not a lot of victories versus the remaining opponents. Now, since 94, they have been tough to come by against those people they have left on their schedule and now Renfrey spun down inside their 30 yard line sacked for a loss of nine by Kevin Reddick already starting to redeem himself for North Carolina. Yeah that's what it looks like when you allow a, a drive to continue because of it. They like to blitz Reddick. When you see him he comes around on the edge it's just kind of a green dog where your guy when you're running back in search of the middle of the formation you can go ahead and blitz. Reddick is able to get all the way up here for the sack. So now second and 19. Big hole up the middle. Joey Duncan, true freshman who they really like, leading the team in rushing yards. He averages almost six yards a carry. He doubles up that time, give him 12. Now this running game, as long as they continue to gain yards, this is what Kurt Roper was talking about, offensive coordinator for Duke. This is the foe, this is the mode that they like to stay in offensively because it opens up their opportunities in the pass game. Good pocket for Renfrey to the outside and gets the first down. Desmond Scott, Duke's number two leading rusher last year, moved to wide receiver during camp after the Blair Holiday injury, and he's doing a nice job. Yeah, four catches last week, two key third down catches on some drives for Virginia Tech and another one here. First down. Here's Duncan again. And he'll get a couple. Think about this uh, passing offense for Duke. Fourth best in the ACC, 291 yards per game. They say Sean Renfrey smarts. Big reason why it's so effective. Well, they say he's so brilliant. You talk about some of the guys that David Cutcliffe has coached, like Eli Manning, or Peyton Manning. Yeah. Even. When he says he's got an intelligent quarterback, it's a Duke level of intelligence. And second and eight. Renfrey looking to throw again, has time to do it. Cox is on and fires. Man wide open. Connor Vernon. And he'll dive down inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. The free safety. Trey Boston beaten by the veteran receiver, Connor Vernon. See Connor Vernon there, the, the middle of those three receivers. Confusion in the secondary for North Carolina. This cost them a great deal versus Wake Forest and one of their losses earlier this season. They keep it on the ground. And Duncan, one more time, is going to be a pickup of a yard, second and nine, as we go to the studio and an update with Matt. Wow. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Second down and nine for Duke. Again in the red zone, and Juwan Thompson with the carry. is wrapped up at the 10-yard line by Tommy Hefford in the weak side linebacker. Pickup of one. So it'll be third down and long as Thompson... To be nicked up a little bit. There is David Cutcliffe. And you talked about his offensive coordinator, Kurt Roper, who followed Cutcliffe from Ole Miss to Duke. And that staff is pretty much an Ole Miss contingent. They just reincarnated that staff. Just about all of them were with David Cutcliffe at Ole Miss, and he got them to a West Division title in the SEC back when he was at the helm of the head coaching position there. On third and eight, Renfrey goes to the end zone. 
looking for Vernon, and the pass is incomplete. It's the first incompletion tonight for Renfrey, and it's going to mean the field goal unit will walk on. He's going, you know, Jamison Crowder is a guy that has emerged for Duke. When we talk about this passing game, you know, it's not like they're just pass happy. They never run the football on the ground. They're about 56% pass. They're pass heavy. But they've got the best duo at wide receiver in the ACC. And Connor Vernon and Jamison Crowder, a guy who's really come on for them. Yeah, another guy, Desmond Scott, who had a yeah. key third down catch on this drive to lead to this field goal attempt. 28-yard attempt by Ross Martin, and it hit the upright, but it got through. It snuck through for Martin, the true freshman who's having an excellent season, and as you can see, having a little luck on his side occasionally, too. Clearly been working with Coach K on his bank shot. <laughs> he did this on purpose. I think it's pretty obvious. Karam's it right in there. I think he called glass before he swung through that ball. <laughs> so Duke now. With a 10 to 3 lead as we go down to Allison. Well, Duke getting a little good luck there. They also got some good news on the injury front, as I mentioned earlier, before the game there. Kind of Mr. Do It All on offense. Brandon Kinnett, their short yardage guy, he was cleared to play. We have not seen him yet, but also out there on the left side of the line, left tackle to Kobe Cofield playing as well. He was questionable with an ankle injury, but both guys cleared to play. All right, Allison, thank you very much. And Kinnett, we expect that when we do see him, short yardage, goal line situations and he's been a difference maker in that aspect for Duke this year. He has. You know, he's a touchdown maker. This guy, they'll line him up in a bunch of different spots. They'll sneak him into the lineup and he's a physical runner for them at the quote unquote quarterback position. A true wildcat kind of a guy but a physical runner that can get between the tackles and short yards and goal line. Sean Tapley from near the goal line. And gets it to the 25 for North Carolina. College Football Daily, your destination for all the latest reports and comprehensive analysis. Our college football experts dissect all the storylines, breaking news each day, weekdays at 1 on ESPNU. There's going to be a lot to talk about this week in college football. Impressive comeback win for LSU today against Texas A&M. Florida and South Carolina, that was a surprise in a lot of ways. Jeff Driscoll is the real deal at Florida. He is the real deal. Right? And you know what? Coming into that ball game, there was concerned. Is Florida, are they capable of passing the football? They're physical enough to get a win over South Carolina's salty defense. Renner goes over the middle. Quinchat Davis, the intended receiver, incomplete. Penalty marker down. Pass interference, defense, number 20, spot foul, automatic first down. That's got Lee Butler, an experienced corner. He's a senior out of Anderson, South Carolina, and he gets the penalty here. Lee Butler was the one on the previous possession where he could have had a pick six, regardless it was a pass breakup, but gets nabbed for the penalty there. Easy yard, it's automatic first. Out to the 39 now. On first down. Quick throw, Ebron the tight end. Ball comes out. Ebron lost it. Who's got it? Still no indication. And Duke comes away with the football. Right now, Duke. Catching all the breaks outside of the big screen pass, things going their way. Now they've been on the negative side of the ledger when it comes to turnovers, but you see Renner gets it to Ebron, and that ball just pops up while he's in the air, gang tackling. David Helton in there gets him up off his feet, and Lee Butler, who just had the PI called on him, is in there, and they're able to fall down on the football. Duke hasn't punted yet in this ball game. 110 yards of offense, up 10-3, and another scoring opportunity past midfield. They start this series in plus territory at the 44-yard line. Here's Renfrey out to the flat. That's Crowder out here, and he's extended out to the sideline and taken out of bounds. That's going to be a loss of five on the play. We talked about Crowder momentarily. 
a fast rising star. He had that 62 yard touchdown reception on the first series last week at Virginia Tech. He is a big play guy in this offense. He's got you know, three catches for touchdowns of 50 yards or more. He's explosive. He can get behind guys in the secondary. Had a big catch versus Virginia Tech to open up the scoring last week. He's a guy that they think could be a playmaker for him in the passing game. And five receiver look here on second and 16, and now we get a whistle. And maybe a problem with the clock. Now they got it going again here. The play clock uh, reset. Maybe not. Still appears to be an issue with the clock. You know, sometimes when you get these teams that don't huddle, and they get over the ball quickly, and it's easy to lose track of where the play clock should be. Please reset the game clock to 124. 124. A lot of switches to manage. You know, you got the game clock to manage, you got the play clock to manage. Sometimes you set the right switch, sometimes you don't. Either way, they got it set now. You said it. This offense has moved this fast. Occasionally, it's hard to keep up. Second and 16 for Duke. Empty backfield, Renfrey. Throws over the middle. It's complete to Scott. And he gets a big chunk of that back. He's going to be about a yard short. And the yardage needed for a first down. Jabari Price, the team leader in tackles for North Carolina, brought him down just short of the sticks. They quickly get up to the line of scrimmage. On third and one, here's Jawan Thompson. And he's got the first down. Thompson leads a three-headed attack in that Duke backfield. We've already seen all three, Thompson, Sneed, and Duncan. Well, Thompson has got the most beef to him. We saw him down there before the game. He's impressive. And he looks the part, and you see they're running between the tackles to pick up a key first down. Third drive for Duke. They've scored on the first two. Little inside handoff here is Sneed. He's got the speed of the three, and he's inside the 20-yard line. A first down for Duke. Trey Boston makes the tackle, but it's a gain of 13 as Duke is in scoring position again. You see Sneed, the defense collapses. He picked up a great block by Jamison Crowder on the perimeter. You get it past the line of scrimmage. That's how you break off the big runs when your perimeter blocking is there. Good job by Crowder on the outside. Sneed's a quick twitch guy. He really got out there quick. Now Renfrey under center this time. It's Sneed again. Lowers his shoulder pads this time, showing a little muscle. And works his way to the 11-yard line in a six-yard pickup. Second down and four. As the first quarter comes to an end, and a very impressive one for Duke against their big rival. Absolutely. And you rewind it a week ago. Duke did similarly, just like this, Versus the Hokies of Virginia Tech, 150 yards. They jump out on front. Now they just need to make sure they've already responded to one big punch with the screen pass. Things going just the way the Blue Devils want right now. 10-3 after one. Duke and North Carolina meeting on the football field for the 99th time. It's a rivalry that gets even hotter come basketball season just around the corner. We're back in Durham in a moment. Hi everybody, I'm Dick Vitale. Hey, I don't care what sport it is, Duke versus North Carolina, it's awesome, baby. Great stadium here in Durham, North Carolina. He's Matt Stinchcomb. I'm Clay Matvick, Allison Williams down on the field. 10-3 Duke. They are playing for the bell tonight, the victory bell. And Duke is playing for bowl eligibility. In recent years, this series Heck, almost a quarter of a century. What am I saying? This has been dominated by North Carolina. Duke feels they've got a great chance tonight, man. Well, and they're earning that great chance. David Cutcliffe said, hey, you want to play in big games? you got to play good teams in a yeah. big game. Playing for bowl eligibility, a rivalry, recruiting at stake. What an opportunity to widen their lead with this offensive possession here. From the 11, Dukes. Josh Sneed, close to a first down. Boston and Martin on the tackle. It's a pickup of three. This is the third series for Duke. And an eight-play drive, a nine-play drive, a touchdown, and a field goal. They took over on 
the North Carolina 43 after a turnover. And here they are in the red zone again. Seventh play of the drive coming up, third and one, as Renfrey goes under center. Play action. In trouble. Renfrey ducked out of harm's way. And he lobs it out of play. What an athletic move by Renfrey to avoid that sack by Trey Boston. Well, North Carolina is not a great pressure team from their front four. Van Dish dials up the pressure from Boston, a safety blitz in tight quarters. Sean Renfrey wisely throws it away. They were in a power eye formation and under center, not something they're often doing. And they're going to go for it. You see David Cutcliffe taking an opportunity for a fourth down conversion. Boone is in there behind Renfrey. And now penalty flag as Renfrey actually moved out to line up as a receiver. Let's see if they draw, were able to draw North Carolina off. That's what Duke is saying. Prior to snap, ball start. Offense. Wow. Five yards. Fourth down. And that's a big penalty against Duke, and now the field goal unit will come out. And we've seen this on film. Anthony Boone does a good job with a hard count. It's hard to tell if that's what they were using there. It looked to me like they drew Sean Underwood off. He jumped before Dave Harding moved. Regardless, a field goal opportunity. You see a penalty really costing Duke right there. Cost North Carolina last week versus Miami as well with these short yard situations. Martin hit from 28 earlier, this from 30. <laughs> Duke struggled in the kicking game last year. It's not been a problem this year with the true freshman doing the kicking. They add three more. It's a 10-point lead for Duke at home. Even if it is still football season, you know, you're looking ahead now and thinking basketball at this time of year, Matt Stinchcomb. Careful. Oh, oh. We'll talk your way out of the job. <laughs> we'll be, we'll be we'll have Dickie V calling football games next. You're right. Here's the ACC Coastal standings, and you can see Duke and North Carolina right in the hunt. I mean, a great rivalry that it is, but this year there's more at stake than just bragging rights. And you take a look, you know, Miami right now sitting atop of this thing. They play FSU tonight. There's opportunity for the winner of this ball game to be atop that coastal division after tonight. Ross Martin kicking off here for Duke. Sean Tapley is going to bring it out of the end zone for North Carolina. And he's going to wish he didn't stop short of the 15 as we go to Matt for an update. About that, national title implications in that game and even Heisman implications in that game. Colin Klein, very impressive. All right, here's North Carolina as they got it. They started their own 14. There is Giovanni Bernard. And we've said it before, Matt. He has been critical to the success of this offense. The two losses that North Carolina has this year, he didn't play. He didn't play, and what makes him special is what he did on this previous run. Breaks tackles, just get him to the line of scrimmage, and he can get yards. And he gets the first down on the second down and one carry, give him three. Justin Fox brings him down, so they'll move the chains. And it's an important series here for North Carolina to kind of stem the tide. Duke's got the momentum right now. Absolutely. You've seen it so far. One scoring drive, a punt, and a fumble. It's possible. Bernard looking for operating room on the near side. He finds him up the sideline. A stiff arm gets to midfield and finally tackled from behind inside the 40-yard line by Jordan Bias. Uh-oh. Giovanni Bernard slow to get up. You just talked about it. You just hit on it play how important he is to this North Carolina football team he missed a couple of games already this season with a knee injury he missed of all all of 2010 with a knee injury he's been plagued at times with some lower body injuries you will see on the previous play a big physical run he's not a big guy so all trying to get upfield and he's able to get outside stiff arms Walter Canty and then almost wonder, hey, you know, it looked very similar to what happened to Bren Renner. That, that looks to me like it might be a shoulder injury. Mm. As he went down and out in the out of bounds area there. We'll check on him when we come back to Durham. 13.25 to go in the half. 
appears to be okay. That would be the second bullet dodge by North Carolina tonight as Bryn Renner had a scare in the first quarter, but he came back in, and it looks like Bernard will too. Yeah, you know, he gets hit late by Jordan Bias, and, and you see there as he goes out of bounds, I don't know if it was like a, like a shoulder injury or something, but I think Allison has more on yeah, they did not spend a lot of time looking at Bernard at all, really, on the sidelines once they got over here. They checked out his shoulder a bit and maybe his neck a little, and then he just seemed anxious to get back in there. All right, Allison, thank you. Bernard, well over 400 yards rushing the last two weeks against Virginia Tech and Miami. He's already over 100 yards total offense tonight. Blue comes in while Bernard stays on the sideline, at least for now. And it will be Blue. He's going to want to throw it here from the 45-yard line. Incomplete, but a flag. And perhaps, certainly would appear, pass interference against Eric Highsmith. He's Lee Butler again in the coverage. Pass interference. Defense, number 31. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. He's Butler there, but they nail Tony Foster for the penalty. Well, that's twice uh, that they've gotten Lee Butler on a pass interference. Ah, you know, and you see it, you're right. It's Tony Foster over there. A lot of hand jockeying. You see that right arm just extended. And I'll tell you what, it looked to me like it was mutual exchange and contact. As it is, that's two PIs now tonight that we've seen versus the secondary of Duke. Good news for North Carolina. Bernard back in. And they'll put him right back to work. He carries inside the 20 to the 19-yard line, a gain of four. He's averaging 130 yards per game, seventh in the nation coming into the weekend. They can't afford to have him on the side. Second down at six. And it's Bernard again. Big hole. And he picks up. It looks like the first down. He laid a punishing hit on Walt Canty. He was having a tremendous senior year, leading the lead, uh, leading the team, I should say, in tackles, and now he's not getting up. Well, Walt Canty's going to spend a lot of time close to the line of scrimmage. Look at big Jonathan Cooper right there. He's just horsing at Nick Sink right off the line of scrimmage. He did a nice crease, Giovanni Bernard. This will run behind one of the best offensive fronts that you're going to find in the country. You see there, Walt Canty, well, these coaches love his headiness, his playmaking ability. You know, he finds Wade versus Virginia. You know, he had a key stop on fourth down. He called his own blitz. And you see there, in the hole, goes low on Giovanni Bernard. He had his head down. Might have gotten kicked in the head. Sometimes that happens, and it'll... Uh, It'll ring your bell up pretty good. He looks like he's okay. And now they're going to have the measurement here. So Bernard got that first down. And he did. So first down and 10. The 13 yard line for North Carolina. There is Larry Fedora succeeding in year one despite a tough situation. Led Southern Miss to four straight bowls and a program record 12 win wins last year. Took over here at North Carolina despite the sanctions. And you know, no division titles at stake, no conference titles, no chance to go to a bowl game. He has this team buying in. Find themselves down 10 here only in the second quarter, but they're in the red zone. Renner will look to the sideline. Blake Anderson, the offensive coordinator over there, making the call. Bernard. And he'll get a hard-earned two yards. As Jordan Bias steps up to make the tackle. You know, we talk about you know, the involvement of some of these safeties. Duke runs a defense similar to North Carolina, 4-2-5. Lots of defensive backs on the field. They're going to have to be engaged in the run support. Jordan Bias nosing around the line of scrimmage comes up with a big stop there on first down. And an interception return for a touchdown last week 
for Duke. We'll see him here again. Play fake. Leonard has time. Now gets out of the pocket. On the run. Throws to the end zone. Pass. Tipped. And it lands incomplete. Eric Highsmith, the intended receiver. Good coverage by Duke. North Carolina's only given up four sacks all season. It's partially because, look at Jonathan Cooper, just stoning guys at the line of scrimmage. Gives his quarterback a big, deep carpet, a pocket to work in. Brent Renner escapes, though. It's sort of protection breaks down late, but you see a key third down. North Carolina had difficulty in the red zone last week versus Miami. On third and eight. Be short of the first down. Gwyn Chad Davis, the freshman receiver, pulled down by Canty. And another player down for Duke. Boy, this has been a physical contest here in the first half. As a fourth down situation for North Carolina will bring the field goal unit out. I guess this is what we should have expected between these two rivals a physical contest with with especially something to play for here first place in the coastal yeah if you look at this drive and, and it's kind of what you would expect Giovanni Bernard getting it done on the ground earlier this se series you get a key pass interference to get North Carolina down in there closer Jim Knowles again dialing up a pressure right into the teeth of the screen pass you see there Sydney. Sarmiento able to get up. They can't afford anybody to go down up front. They're playing some younger guys. You know, this Duke defense kind of benefiting from having to play a lot of young guys last year. Sarmiento, the junior, looks like he's going to be okay. Casey Barth hit from 30 earlier tonight. This from 23. He's got a seven-point game. North Carolina. Stalls out in the red zone, but they get three on the board. Thanks in part to Giovanni Bernard. And a big run. Nine plays, 80 yards in 247. It's a seven-point lead for Duke. North Carolina. It's a 23-yard field goal on that last drive. There is Giovanni Bernard, 58 yards on that last drive for the Tar Heels. He's got 77 receiving yards tonight. Should say 77 rushing, 44 receiving. We talked about it before. This is an entirely different offense when he's not on the field. Yeah, you could see it earlier in the season. You see 0-2 without him. Those were the losses to Wake Forest and Louisville. Kind of worked his way back slowly into the offense and then really exploded the past two weeks. He got a ton of touches, 50 attempts the past two ball games versus Virginia Tech and Miami. Weed Butler. On the return for Duke. And he gets it to the 25. Tim Burton, regular kick returner for Duke, has been dismissed from the team. So Butler doing the chores tonight as we take a look at Giovanni Bernard. He is very impressive, very strong on his feet. He does, he's not a big guy. He kind of pinballs around, and when he sees daylight, he hits it. But you see broken tackles, lots of yards after contact. If you can get him clean to the line of scrimmage, he can make defenses pay. Sophomore out of Davy, Florida. Now here's Duke. Back on offense, Jalay Duncan, a good run on first down. Boy, did David Cutcliffe emphasize the importance of first down here tonight. Well, three or more yards was going to be a good play. Well, they get seven there. What an excellent job, not only on first down, but just in the run game in general of gaining yardage versus what's proven to be a pretty salty run defense in North Carolina. Play action. Looking for a big play. Over the middle. Man open. Jamison Crowder. Down at the 41 of North Carolina. Jackson makes the tackle. It's a gain of 27. And what sets that up is the success that they've had in the run game. The play action means something when you're getting five yards on the ground. And they go right back to the run, and Duncan, another good run on first down. It's an inside the 35. 
And look at Duke tonight. They're three for three on drives, a touchdown, and two field goals. Yeah, and they're driving. You see this eight-play drive, a nine-play drive. And now a man for North Carolina coming onto the field as a substitute. Was Shaquille Rashad ran into the receiver Connor Vernon of Duke. They collided as he was trying to make a late substitution for the Tar Heels. And now the star receiver for Duke is down. I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen this happen, where an, an injury, where there's a collision like this during a substitution. And we'll see during the top left. There's Connor Vernon. Look at this. I tell you what, I mean, it's clearly intentional right there. Shaquille Rashad, number 47. There's no chance that he doesn't see, or number 42 rather, that he doesn't see Connor Vernon. Now, I'm surprised that that wasn't flagged. There's no, I mean, look, if Shaquille Rashad can't see a receiver standing right there, then we got to get his peripheral vision checked. There's no chance that you can play linebacker in the ACC if you can't see a guy just standing there. I'm, I'm really surprised that that wasn't an unsportsmanlike or unnecessary roughness. You see David Cutcliffe going, how does that happen? Yeah, I think he's making the same argument that you're making. I think Connor Vernon's going to be fine. Shaquille Rashad's a true freshman. He takes a free run at their key receiver. I don't think that was by accident. So now second and three for Duke. To get to the 31 for a first down, and they do on the ground. Jelaine Duncan picks it up down to the 29 of North Carolina. And Connor Vernon, this is good to see, he's back out on the field now for the Blue, Blue Devils. Yeah, that's good. Uh, you know, should have never happened. It's good that he's back out there. But right now, Duke enjoying some success running behind the right side of their offensive line behind Lakin Tomlinson and Perry Simmons doing a good job versus this front. Out into the flat. This is caught by Thompson. And he's going to be stopped short of the 25-yard line. And a man for North Carolina is down now. This is starting to become epidemic as Tim Jackson, the nose tackle, is going to be attended to by the trainers. We're going to take this opportunity to go to the studio and get an update with Matt. All right. Thank you, Matt. All right, meanwhile, we're back here in Durham. Where Tim Jackson is down for North Carolina. Let's go back to that play a few moments ago. You see it right here. Tim Jackson, he's all tied up. And then you see Ryan Moore goes low on him, cuts him from behind. You know, we've seen that now. That's back-to-back -back plays. There's no room in football for either one of those examples. And now you see Tim Jackson being carried off the field. We talk about rivalry games. We talk about what's at stake, the Coastal Division lead, you know, bowl eligibility. But you can't have guys out there taking free runs at your receivers. Well, and you can't have centers out there chop blocking you know, nose tackles on the backside of, of swing passes. You're convinced that Rashad ran into Vernon intentionally? I don't know how you don't see it. You know, how do you play linebacker and you can't see a receiver standing right there? I want to ask you about that. A little bit more after this play. Second down and seven for Duke. Scored on all three of their possessions. Play fake. Renfrey comes short to Thompson, and he's got the first down. The 17 yard line. Nick Saban said that the game is moving too fast, the head coach at Alabama. And he thought these substitutions were too dangerous. Is that maybe an indication of, of what he was talking about? If you give Rashad the benefit of the doubt? No, I don't think so. I mean, that, that's a, such an oddity that I don't think that Coach Saban was too concerned about that happening with enough frequency to slow these offenses down. Seven play of the drive on first and ten. They go back to Duncan. Jitterbugs ahead for just a yard as Reddick makes the tackle. Really impressed with this offensive front, this offense in total for Duke. They have moved the ball on all four of their possessions. They've done an excellent job, not only protecting, but getting the run game going. You know, Sylvester Williams, there's some playmakers in this North Carolina defensive front. They haven't been able to do too good of a job for some of these interior runs versus Duke. Renfrey steps up, gets away from the pass rush, and now goes down inside the 15. A penalty marker down. Dion Guy brought Renfrey to the turf, but this is a penalty here against Duke. 
Uh, I think they're going to get Kevin Reddick for P.I. right here. Holding, 73, offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Wow. That's Cofield, Jacoby Cofield, the left tackle, who was a game-time decision tonight, as Allison Williams told us, because of that ankle injury called for the penalty. I'll tell you what, you're going to see Jamison Crowder missed it. He's coming into your screen. Watch Kevin Reddick. He's still an eligible receiver. Sean Rinfrey hadn't crossed the line of scrimmage. As it was, it backed up because of the holding point. So second and 19 now for Duke. Another play fake. Renfrey to the end zone. Man wide open, and it's nearly picked off. It was thrown short, intended for Vernon, and Tim Scott almost picked Renfrey. You know, Connor Vernon was standing wide open, but because Renfrey was flushed, Josh Sneed tried to come up and help the protection. You'll see it's going to leak. You see Josh Sneed here, he gets run over. Renfrey flushes out, and he just doesn't get enough on this ball. Connor Vernon comes back, does a good job of playing defense. Tim Scott's probably North Carolina's best cover guy. They're an aggressive secondary. That's a missed opportunity for Duke because of the late protection breakdown. Scott almost had his fourth pick of the year. It's about third and 19. And now it is intercepted. Trey Boston. The free safety. And Duke, for the first time, is turned away. Well, this time, interception. He's trying to go back to Jamison Crowder. Duke felt as if that they could attack the safeties. And you see, I think maybe Crowder might have been just a little bit late out of his break. Trey Boston does a good job. He spent time at cornerback. He spent time at safety last year. They think that he's starting to settle in a little bit at that safety position. North Carolina generating turnovers in their secondary, 11 interceptions on the season. And he turned Duke away from a legitimate scoring opportunity. And you wonder if this is another second quarter momentum swing scenario. Not the play fake runner from the end zone. Throws it incomplete. Trying to get it in the hands of Jack Tab, the tight end. And North Carolina, Matt, as much as they're trying to get used to a new offense, a new up-tempo offense under Larry Fedora, they've got a new look defense, too, at 4-2-5, and it's been impressive at times. It has, and you know, where the opportunities have been in the secondary, Duke's been running the football well, surprisingly, versus the front. But again, here we see, it appears as if North Carolina's backed up as they get in the red zone. Defensive coordinator for Duke, Jim Knowles, not scared to ratchet up some of the pressure, some of their blitzing. Gio Bernard, nothing there. To Gio Bernard. Job in the middle. As Duke, that's the attack of Stephen Ingram, the nose guard is there. They're going to third down and long for North Carolina. Just over seven minutes to go here in the first half. 13-6. Duke on top. A win tonight. And they're bowl eligible for the first time since 94. Bryn Renner. Tipped. And that is nearly picked off. Or is it? I'm going to say no. It did hit the turf. Jordan Bias. And an interception last week almost had one there. Either way, Duke is going to take over as the punting unit comes out. You see Walt Canty, we talked about him being an impact player. He's in there to break up this pass. A near interception, you see the ball skipping off the turf. In North Carolina, they like their playmakers outside, but they're not deep. When you look at it, once you get past Highsmith, well, really, you're talking about some new faces. Glenshad Davis, Tapley, yeah. Jeremy Boyd has been injured a lot this season. Hasn't been a lot of opportunity for this offense on the outside. And that receiving core has been beaten up. There's Connor Vernon on the punt return for Duke, and it's a good one. Inside North Carolina territory to the 44-yard line. Now the second three and out of the night for North Carolina, and Duke now with good field position and a lead of 13 to 6. It's been a disappointing year on whole for the ACC as we're back here in Durham. 13 to 6, Duke on top. 6.49 to go here in the first half. Seminoles taking on Miami tonight. Miami, 
Clemson came back to beat Virginia Tech today. Florida State and Clemson, the two best hopes for the ACC to get into a BCS game. Well, you know, there's a chance that the ACC ends up, obviously they'll have one in a BCS bowl, but there's a chance that they can have two with at-large. You know, the idea being, you know, the, if Alabama or another SEC team, if they send two, one goes to the national championship, there's a vacancy available for an ACC team for that. Second series for Duke to start in North Carolina territory tonight. And Juwan Thompson on first down barrels ahead to the 39-yard line. A gain of five for Thompson. He is the power back of the three that we have seen tonight for Duke. And again, success on the ground on first down in this Duke offense. Thompson again. His sixth carry of the night. And this one is going to be close to a first down. Yeah, he's got it. I tell you what, coming into this game, we said lines of scrimmage were going to be crucial. Right now, Duke winning that battle versus North Carolina. They keep it on the ground. Thompson again, and he finds a seam to the 20 yard line. Boston, the free safety, finally brings him down. It's a gain of 13. What's this right side behind the Duke offensive front? Look at the hole. That's plenty of running room for Jawan Thompson. He can make his own hole, but there, good job up front. They give Thompson a breather, give it to Duncan, and he makes positive yards. The offensive front that you're talking about has been very impressive. It's the North Carolina line that we thought was going to be the dominant factor here tonight on offense, but it's been Dukes. Duncan again. A short game. Bring up third down. And Sylvester Williams makes the tackle. It's the first time really that we've mentioned him tonight. I mean, right now, Duke having a lot of success between the tackles, running the football. We've seen Jalen Duncan on the series before, prior to the pick. Good job running between the tackles. Jawan Thompson. Now Duke finds themselves in a third and six scenario. There's opportunity, obviously, with the play action where they've had success so far today. We expect to see. Well, you see it, and as this play clock runs down, call a timeout. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Connor Vernon, but last week, you know, Desmond Scott was a guy who started to assert himself in that slot position as a good possession guy on third downs. Allison. Well, you guys were talking about how well the Duke offensive line has been playing tonight. Coach is very happy with them. There were some penalties, though, on the last couple drives, and Coach is just reminding that O-line to keep fighting the fight, but don't outsmart yourselves. He said you have to play, start, play smart for the entire 60 minutes and maintain those physical fundamentals. Got to go, gotta know and then go has been the message to the line. There's Brian Moore, Allison. He is the veteran anchor of that Duke offensive line and the center, Coral Gables. With the, with the tempo that even Duke runs at, the center is so important because he can't get lined up until he's over. No, he's the one that sets the entire offensive front. You know, your guard can't line up until the center gets lined up. Tackle can't get lined up until the guard gets lined up. The receivers, they don't know if they're on the ball or off the ball. If you're going to run no huddle, if you want to run up tempo, Russell Bodine and Brian Moore, they have to be the guys that have to be in shape. They got to get up there and get lined up so everybody else can as well. Already over 100 yards on the ground for Duke's offense tonight. Play clock under five, trying to convert on third and six. Caught, Crowder, nice move, first down and more. Inside the five, Jamison Crowder. And they hurry up, get on the ball. The big plays, we've seen Duke do this all night. They're opportunistic with their tempo. It's not their normal mode of operation, but you get a big play, they jump over the ball. Duncan. And he's going to be stopped short of the goal line and pushed back by Reddick and company. It's a gain of two, so second down and goal to go for the Blue Devils. See David Cutcliffe there, They're recognizing the opportunity here. Be surprised if they don't test the interior of the North Carolina front again. Duncan, touchdown Duke. Great field position to start the drive, and Duke takes advantage. 19-6 now, late here in the half, and the extra point pending. 
I'll tell you what, that was an authoritative drive yes, by this Duke offense. No finesse. Was it throwing the ball out to the perimeter, wide receiver screens? That was running the football right at this North Carolina defense and getting it down and finally punching it in. Martin with the extra point. And Duke has a two touchdown lead, and they've capitalized on North Carolina mistakes. Well, we see that they get a stop, a pick. Kevin Reddick roughs the passer, then Anthony Boone able to punch it in on a continuation of that series. And then they hit Eric Eber. He's a key playmaker for him, a tight end, but that fumble led to a field goal by Ross Martin. And then this, deep, this touchdown right here, they got excellent field position and plus territory, and do capitalize. So you think Brian Moore <laughs> announcing their presence versus this North Carolina defense, and he's fired up. You love it when those offensive linemen are fired up, being a former lineman yourself. You know, you get your jersey dirty. Yeah. We talked about you know, yesterday we are meeting with Kurt Roper, offensive coordinator, and David Cutcliffe. They've been around a couple offenses together at Ole Miss and at Tennessee. You're not an offensive lineman in the country that doesn't want to run the football. When you're talking about this Duke offense, they're pretty 50-50 coming into this game, but they've really been heavy on the run game tonight for North Carolina. Martin bangs it into the end zone. No return for Tapley this time. 4.25 to go before half. BCS countdown on ESPN and ESPNU tomorrow. A day after all the dust is settled, our analysts will dig in to break down the key victories and defeats, discuss the impact on the BCS standings. Plus, we're going to look ahead to the key matchups for next week. BCS countdown at 8.30 and 9, presented by Tostitos tomorrow on ESPN and the U. Just a ton of great games today. We talked about the impact on the ACC, the SEC, some things uh, coming more clear now. Florida, can't say enough about the Gators and how impressive they've been. Second year under Will Muschamp. Giovanni Bernard. Good first down after the 29. Canty brings him down. It's a pickup of four. Now, we got to remind everybody, Duke is in a good situation here right now, Matt, leading 20 to 6. But remember last week, they built a big lead, 20 to nothing, on Virginia Tech in the first half and ended up losing that game 41 to 20. As Bernard. He stopped. Pick up a two, so third down and four. It was right before halftime. We're right, Clay. Well, Virginia Tech was able to seize the momentum. Should have been 20 to 10, ended up being 20 to 17. Duke needs to guard against losing that, allowing North Carolina to have something to feel good about going into the intermission. North Carolina 0 for their last four on third down conversion attempts. Renner sprints out, keeps it. He's trying to pick up the first down on his own, and I don't think he got there. It'll depend on the spot. It is close, but Jordan DeWalt on Dijo made the tackle to make this close, enough probably for a measurement. You know, we were talking with Jim Knowles last night about some of these zone read looks that North Carolina employs. You know, there, Brent Renner, what they want to make sure is that they force the quarterback to keep it. Look, your option is for it to end up in Giovanni Bernard's hands. This guy's the most explosive runner in the ACC right now. He doesn't show up in the statistics. He hadn't played 75% of their game. This guy's getting seven and eight yards a clip every time he touches the ball. Who do you want carrying it? You want Bryn Renner. He did an excellent job right now. The wall on DJ playing upfield and forcing the key. Short. So if you're North Carolina, Larry Fedora, what do you do here? You see it, and we've talked about it already this year. North Carolina's converted more than any other team in the ACC. Nine fourth down conversions. He's aggressive. I think he's going for it. I'll be honest with you, with the way Duke has played tonight on defense, I'd punt the football away and hope that your defense, your North Carolina defense, can get something done. Because right now, the way this offense is going for Duke, they've been the ones that have been difficult to get off the field. Keeps the offensive unit on the field, Renner. I'll be surprised if he doesn't just try to draw him off sides with him under center.
Renner keeps it himself. Great effort, and it appears he has it. Yes, first down, North Carolina. You know what, I like that. I mean, you get up there, you see the quarterback push, Renner. A lot of these quarterbacks want to do QB sneaks right. They want to sneak it right away. you got to give your offensive line a chance to get push. Talking about running behind big Travis Bond and Jonathan Cooper. You like your chances in fourth and inches, and Larry Fedora gambles. And once again, now 10 conversions on the year on fourth down. Out in the flat, Bernard. Boy, he is wrapped up immediately. Jordan Bias, who has been very active here in the first half, dumps Bernard for a loss of two, second down and long. Great tackle by Jordan Bias. Now a little screen. And that's Highsmith on the catch. As you mentioned before, the leader of that thin receiving core gets out of bounds. Clock stops with 2.22 to go. North Carolina has all its timeouts remaining. Duke has two remaining. Another third down situation, though. Well, Duke can keep them out of it. Look, I think Larry Fedora, regardless if they gain a yard right here, is in four down mode territory where I think he's just thinking we'll go for it. Pressure, Renner, complete, short of the first down is Quinshad Davis. Cockrell made the stop about a yard and a half short of the first down. Another fourth down for North Carolina. Well, you know, we just got done talking about the Duke possession. How that offensive front is doing a good job. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm a little surprised at this, I suppose. With a minute and a half, you go for it on the previous fourth down, but this is a good bit further to go and you see that here Larry Fedora saying look let's play field position let's be smart and give him a short field with time on the clock and Connor Vernon back to return for Duke a dangerous return man this is a return unit that ranks second in the ACC in punt return average and he is lightning quick they kick it away from him lands at the 25 bounces inside the 20 and keeps rolling Good kick for Tommy Hibbard, 41 yards. But what a half this has been for the Duke Blue Devils, man. Yeah, you, you look at the drives. You know, they've thrived on big plays this year. That's how they jumped out to a lead versus Virginia Tech. But tonight, they've been able to run the football between the tackles, establish the play-action passing game, and you can see it's borne some dividends for them. Look at the results, the touchdowns, field goals. Well, really, the only time that they were turned away was an interception. You can see that the last time they led at halftime, a long time ago, just incidentally, was the last time they beat North Carolina. Yeah, that was the last time that Duke won the victory bill. That's at stake again here tonight. First play of this series, and it's Thompson right up the middle. First down run as Boston makes the tackle. We'll see, Lincoln, Lincoln Thompson's doing, Thompson is doing a great job in his right guard position right now. That's what's opening up these holes. 40 seconds to go. Thompson again. Flag flies. It's a short pickup for Thompson. Duke has two timeouts remaining. North Carolina three. Stops the clock with 30 sec seconds to go here in the half. Holding. Offense. Number 73, 10 yards, still first down. Second penalty on Cofield tonight. They're committing Kevin Reddick to the line of scrimmage. He came underneath Cofield, ends up getting a hold. In the previous play, though, that's what they're doing defensively. It's a coordinator from North Carolina. Dave Dish is saying, look, I'm going to commit one of my best players to the line of scrimmage. It resulted in a, uh, in a hold. Versus Cofield there. Duke appears satisfied with what they have done here in the first half. They're content with this clock run down. They have to run at least one play. And Duke's going to take a timeout here. Nine seconds to go in the first half. North Carolina 
has proven this year and under Larry Fedora they are a pretty good second half team so even though things haven't gone real well here for the Tar Heels in the first half second halves have been good this year and you see the third quarter you see this number 13 they've given up two scores in the third quarter one's a kick return versus Virginia Tech and a rushing touchdown by Miami otherwise this defense goes in at halftime they tighten things up and you know it hasn't gone I think the way we would have anticipated in this ball game North Carolina's secondary was thought to be the area of opportunity for Duke's offense and it may very well still be the case but it hasn't needed to be because of Duke's ability to run the football Duke is going to take a 20 to 6 lead into the locker room at halftime four scores in their first five possessions tonight and Sean Renfrey and the Blue Devils feeling good about the work they put in here in the first half tonight in Durham let's go down to Allison Williams okay uh, Allison doesn't quite have coach there she does Allison Oh, Namir, Coach, uh, you knew you had to hit on some big plays on offense. You've done that. You've also ran the ball really well. How have you guys had so much success? Well, we have blocked them. We, we came into the game believing we could run the football, and thank goodness we've had to. We've thrown it good at times, but not as well. We just settled down a little bit defensively. It's about three plays, and they, otherwise they hadn't done much. But that's a dangerous football team, a lot of weapons, it's 30 minutes left. I think after last week, these guys know we better play the second half. That being said, what will be the biggest points of emphasis? I'm going to go in and talk about the things we've got to do to get better. And there are things that we've got to do to get better. We do that, and we have a really good opportunity to win this football game. Thank you, Coach. 257 yards of total offense for Duke in that first half. David Cutcliffe and the Blue Devils leading North Carolina, their arch rival at halftime. Now Matt, Tom, and Jason. In the studio, one half of football away from becoming bowl eligible for the first time since 1994. 20 to 6 as we get ready to start the third quarter. Lead North Carolina. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. Alongside former Georgia All American lineman Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Matvick. And how about this? David Cutcliffe has turned things around here. You can just feel it. The emotion here has such a different feel right now. And we've felt this before. Duke Blue Devil fans have felt this before, where the offense does an excellent job in the first half. Defense stymieing North Carolina offensively. But then somehow in the second halves of some of these bigger games this season, yeah. things have started to unravel. But we saw already in the first half of this ball game. Duke able to close out the second quarter without much bleeding outside of a couple of big plays, really three of them on a screen pass that set up an eventual uh, field goal. This defense for Duke has done an excellent job of containing what has been a very high octane offense for the North Carolina Tar Heels and offensively for Duke. It's really been uh, the exact opposite of what we thought it was going to be coming into this ball game. 28 rushes, only 14 pass attempts, and we thought that the opportunity was going to be on the perimeters. And I think perhaps that might still be the case, ultimately, versus the North Carolina secondary. But because they have established their running game, and specifically between the tackles, I think it's going to help this offense. Look at this matchup between Perry Simmons and Deion Guy. He's a hybrid, and he gets taken right out of your screen and dumped for a big run. And then you'll see here, Tommy Hefferman ultimately makes a misread. He scrapes all the way over to the opposite side of the formation, and it's wide open in the center of the North Carolina defensive front for Jalay Duncan. And then Perry Simmons again. He's going to seal up on Kevin Reddick. And David Reed, their big tight end, is going to seal Jesse Rogers. And there's an opportunity right there in the crease. You'll see there Brian Moore climbs up on Hefferman. And Jalay Duncan, again, able to get four and five yards on early downs, and it's setting them up for success already tonight. You can see Duke eight yards over their season average. They've only been running the ball 32 times a game, already 28 rush attempts versus North Carolina. Jalay Duncan for Duke. And a flag down as he is stopped at the 18-yard line. Holding. 
56 on the return team. Spot five. First down. It's uh, Kyler Brown of Duke as we get down to Allison. Clay, Matt, you talked about Duke's ability to run the ball. When I talked to UNC head coach Larry Fedora after the half, the first thing he said to me is we have to stop the run. Right now they are not making Duke one-dimensional because of missed tackles and missed assignments. Offensively for UNC in the second half, he said we have to execute better. Right now we're just getting out executed. Every time it's a different player making a different mistake, they've got to clean it up. Let's we'll see what kind of adjustments they've made. This looks good. Sneed, nothing as he tried to go between the tackles. As you alluded to, Stinch, they were ready for him this time. Darian Rankin, the strong safety, stepped up, and so did Sean Underwood, and it's a loss. The penetration killed that opportunity to run between the tackles. It looked like Underwood was able to explode upfield. See number 97, able to beat the block of David Hardy, got beat inside, disrupted that play from the get-go. Starting field position of the night for the Blue Devils. Renfrey in the end zone, throws to the sideline, incomplete. Vernon was there, but I think Renfrey was just trying to get rid of it. And it's going to bring up third down at 12. Coach Dish again dialing up some edge pressure, bringing Gene Robinson from his ram position. He's a safety by trade. Nice pickup by Josh Sneed, but Renfrey, I think, gets a little nervous sometimes with some of this edge pressure. He flushed out. Ended up just going away to keep it safe, but you see the negative yardage play on first down, costing Duke so far in the series in the side of the line goalpost. Good run. Thompson picks up the first down. How about that? Jawan Thompson. 14-yard gain. They'll move the chains to keep the drive going. Third and long. You just want to get off your own goal line, get room to get out there and maybe get a punt off. And once again, the internal portion of the North Carolina front not getting it done. A sneeze with a positive carry on first down, giving him three. North Carolina's run defense coming into the game, Matt, allowing less than 100 yards per game. Third best in the ACC. Gave up a good chunk, 119 in that first half. You know, and offensive coordinator Kurt Roper for Duke has basically shifted gears. He's taking what has been successful, knowing that he can always go back, I think, to what's proven to be a very support passing attack. Now the play action. The run affected. He to set up something on the play action pass, but nothing there this time. Kevin Reddick, good coverage there. Sneed was the intended receiver. It brings up another third down and fairly long. You know, and, and we haven't touched on this much, but, you know, Tim Jackson was helped off the field. He was the nose tackle. He's the interior anchor of this front. Perhaps that's contributing to some of the successes Duke has had. Renfrey, plenty of time, but it's incomplete intended for Reeves, the tight end. And now Renfrey wants a penalty. No flag thrown fourth down. Yes, Sylvester Williams able to get upfield there. He was over the nose. And Gene Robinson he's made a couple of plays, came on a blitz on the first down, and then he was able to get a batted ball. Duke wasn't any unable to come out of the gate smoking. And there's a potential for North Carolina to have excellent starting field position. Renfrey, who was 10 for 14 for 138 in the first half, 0 for 3 on the first series of the second half. Bernard to field that punt. Dives at the 41. 39 yard kick. North Carolina, good field position for Bryn Renner and the offensive unit to start here in the second half. Again, the second halves have been good for the Tar Heels this year. We'll see if they've got and in them here again uh, tonight in Durham where they're down 20 to 6. You know, they just they didn't have many opportunities in the first half. Threes and out, a couple of three and outs, turnovers, only 31 offensive plays, well below. The trend for their average per game of around 75 plays. They're on track to run about 62. That's how this offense looked a year ago. It'll be Gio Bernard and a good run. Not across midfield. And he is stopped by number five, Brandon Close Braxton. to a first down. Brandon Braxton made the tackle. The North Carolina offense in the first half was all Bernard. 
123 yards of total offense for him. The rest of the team at 29. And you can see Duke starting to nose around the box more, around the tackle box, as opposed to staying back in coverage. Play fake to Bernard. This one is tipped. And lands incomplete. Kyler Brown, the middle linebacker. Got his hand on it, second and ten. Kyler Brown looked like he was going to Eric Ebron over the middle, and Kyler Brown was right underneath the route. I don't think Bryn Renner ever saw him. But you can see Duke, you know, less and less respect, I think, for the edges and starting to commit more defenders to the box versus the run. Bernard is the lone setback. Renner checks the play. Gets under center, Russell Bodine. Second and 10. It's A.J. Blue on the inside handoff. Pinballing his way to the 41-yard line. A couple of yards short of the first down. Braxton the tackle. A.J. Blue, who Jim Knowles said is darn good, too. Everybody talks about Gio Bernard, but Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator for Duke, wary of A.J. Blue before the game started. Absolutely, and, and rightfully so. You see, they've got other playmakers. That opportunity, Jim Knowles dialed up a rundown blitz. Kyler Brown unable to make the tackle. We talk about some of the elusiveness of Giovanni Bernard. Same for A.J. Blue on a couple of spin moves. Third and short. Bernard. And he's got it. Picks up the first down. That is their first third down conversion in seven attempts. So it's been a while since North Carolina moved the chains in a third down conversion. As you see Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator for Duke in his third year. Former head coach at Cornell, where he was at for six seasons. He's a smart guy, an Ivy League guy. It fits right in here. Again. A play fake. Leonard going up top. Has a man, but it's incomplete. And that's uh, Davis running right along there. Tony Foster, second down. Davis has emerged as kind of a deep threat. When we talked about you know, Jeremy Boyd. He's been hampered by injuries, hasn't been able to contribute in the passing game. Going after Tony Foster again, who got a pass interference in the first half. Well, was well overthrown by Winter Vick. Draw play. And Bernard tripped up by Kyler Brown. It's inside the 35, a pickup of four. You know, when we were talking about those receivers, it makes you wonder how North Carolina's getting it done because they're averaging over 250 passing yards per game. As you take a look at Jim Knowles. to the flat. This is Romar Morris, his first touch of the game, and on third and relatively long, he is stopped. Brown again making the play. Tony Foster there as well for Duke, fourth down. And clearly, you know, we saw Jim Knowles earlier, the, uh, the funky chicken defense worked. Whatever it is that he was signaling out there, we talked about him, you know, how he has simplified the defense down to basically one word, one word that'll include the front, the coverage, the blitz, and then a check, depending on what the North Carolina offense goes to, to help address their up-tempo style. Going to attempt a 52-yard field goal. Casey Barth, two for two tonight. Fake. Hibbert. Tommy Hibbert on the fake. He's got the first down for North Carolina. The North Carolina punter, who acts as the holder on field goal attempts, takes it for the first down. Turns out he's a pretty good athlete, it looks like, as well. I don't know if he was looking to throw or if it was a run all the way. Regardless, he's able to escape, contain. C.J. France ends up on the ground. And Hibbert, showing some athleticism, diving for the first down as Larry Fedora gambles. What'd you think of that gamble? Yeah, it worked out. It's easy to make that call now. He got the yeah. first down. Went for it on fourth down once going into halftime. You see him rolling the dice. So the ninth play of the drive now as they move the chains. And here's Bernard again. Look at those legs moving. What an effort by Giovanni Bernard. 
second and seven on that play. There were three or four Duke Blue Devils there. Nobody could bring them down. Starting to assert their will, this big offensive line. It's a tackle trap. Can't see it there, but they bring over James Hurst. All 320 pounds of him. Bernard. Brenner's hand off once again so goes impressive. to Bernard. Last year he became the first Tar Heel over a thousand yards in 15 years. He's easily going to go over that again this year. You see the offense. It seems as if they've got Duke on their heels Come on, as they progress Bennett. down this football field. Third straight 100-yard game for Bernard. On first down from the 14, it's Geo again. Geo Bernard with the carry. You're right, North Carolina has started to control that line of scrimmage, and Jim Knowles just shakes his head. Well, and he knows that they're forfeiting size, and a lot of people will be. This is one of the better offensive fronts. It's difficult for them to sub, sub because of the pace. In fact, the offense is over the ball. Fake to A.J. Blue, the pass toward the end zone. Some contact intended for Quinn Chad Davis. Ross Cockrell in the coverage, no penalty flag. So to bring up third down. Well, this time, the refs let him play a little bit. We see Cockrell locked up with Quinn Chad Davis, man to man. A lot of hand fighting. And Davis just runs out of real estate. He's able to get a hand on the ball. But the boundary is a defender when you get down close to the red zone. Cockrell uses it to his advantage. 13th play of this drive. Kept alive by that fake field goal attempt. When you see this, Brent Renner buying time. Duke is showing blitz again. Looks like they're going to check back out of that. They clock at four. Renner, some pressure, throws incomplete. <laughs> Kyler Brown, what a defensive series it's been for Brown. Fourth down, North Carolina. And once again, Duke doing a great job in the red zone of keeping UNC out of the end zone. Forcing yet another field goal, Kyler Brown, he bluffs the blitz, Ren Renner checks, and he drops into the underneath coverage, Lock trying to hit A.J. Blue out of the Lock backfield, them. unsuccessful because of Kyler Brown, who made a couple of plays from his inside linebacker position on that possession. Now from 28, a fake this time, and it's good for Casey Barth. He is three for three. And Larry Fedora would like touchdowns instead of field goals. They keep chipping away, it's 20 to nine that Roy Williams is going to be able to carry on this season. What a scare for him last month health-wise. Uh, doctors found a tumor on his kidney. Good news, it was benign, and he's feeling good, and he feels that he's going to be able to coach and, and have a good year with the North Carolina Tar Heels this season. You know, Roy Williams is a fixture, obviously, in the basketball landscape, collegiate athletics in general. That was frightening for everybody. And great news to know that he's going to be just fine. Sean Renfrey and Duke, they've got it. At their 25, leading 20 to 9. The Blue Devils, with a win tonight, become bowl eligible for the first time since 1994. Bobble on that play. Renfrey able to get it to Sneak. And he's going to pick up three, maybe four. A lot of touches. They're spreading the ball around. Josh Sneed, physical guy as well. Juwan Thompson's probably the biggest body that they've got coming out of the backfield. But Duke continuing to have the opportunity to keep the ball on the ground. As long as North Carolina keeps ending up with field goals, they can stay just in this offensive mode right here. Four-man rush picked up nicely. Now Renfrey backpedal off his back foot, thrown short, and caught by Isaac Blake. No, incomplete. The tight end unable to haul it in. Another great pickup, though. You see Robinson coming off the edge, and look at Josh Schneed locking up. He ends up getting a knockdown on pass protection. You know, Renfrey, he can trust it, I think, a little bit more. We saw it on the previous possession where he gets a little bit flushed, but Josh Schneed doing an excellent job in pass protection. And North Carolina's had a tough time with the pass rush this year, they've even looked for guys on the offensive side of the ball to come over to the defensive side of the ball to help out, to no avail. On third and six. 
Renfrey complete. Caught by Scott. Still on his feet inside and across the 40. 13 yard play. First down, Duke. Desmond Scott, we talked about it earlier in the broadcast. He's a go to guy for them on third down. There's many weapons, and he does an excellent job getting open versus Jabari Price and getting the conversion to continue the series. Sneed again. Creeps through a seam and another first down run. Hog tied at the 40 yard line of North Carolina, a gain of 18. Boston finally able to wrestle him down, but this is an impressive running attack. You know, North Carolina likes to play too high. Look at the blocking up front. Josh Sneed able to get into the secondary. Nobody left but Trey Boston. But UNC, they like to play two deep safeties, but more and more we're seeing on that one even, Darian Rankin spinning down towards the line of scrimmage to help play run support. And it's Snead again. When we were talking with Kurt Roper, the offensive coordinator for Duke. He said, you know, how come you don't settle on one running back? You got Thompson, Snead, and Duncan. He goes, they all contribute because they all deserve to play. In practice, they're all equally good. Yeah, you, you like that. And, and even tonight, I think that's been borne out with their productivity. Now, Jalay Duncan gets in there to spell Josh Sneed, and there really hasn't been a marked drop-off, depending on who's in the backfield. They've all done well tonight. Dances in the pocket, releases, Blakeney the catch. That's a first down reception. As Duke continues to move right down the field, 6'6", 235 pounds, Isaac Blakeney. And they move their playmakers around. You know, he's, a, he's a tight end in name. He'll line up in the backfield there. He was lined up all the way wide outside the formation. And now it's Jalay Duncan's turn. Equal opportunity offense for the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, and allows them to keep fresh legs. And something that we talked about earlier, Duke, they stay in their no huddle. They stay over the ball. And if they don't substitute to the line, then North Carolina can't substitute either. So as they build up plays on the ground, they can wear down this North Carolina defensive front as well. Drive for Duke, and it's a play fake. Renfrey to the outside. There's the star, Connor Vernon, with the catch at the 10. Tonight, Duke's leading receiver in all time receiving yards at the university. And, and Connor Vernon caught a pass in the first quarter on that exact same route, and they went right back to it in the same area of the field. And it's Duncan to the five. Just Second and goal. Yeah, 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 just wearing North Carolina down. And we saw Duke maybe getting a little weary defensively, and they see it. Another positive run, and then right back over the football. And it's Duncan. Well, he's going to be stood up at the three-yard line by Boston and Rankin. So third down and goal to go. Duke doing an excellent job with their pulling guards. Lakin Tomlinson on several runs, pulling from his right guard spot. Getting his running backs a clean entry into the line of scrimmage. And here we've got third and about three or four yards and another red zone opportunity. If Brandon Kinnett were completely healthy, we might see him here, but we don't. Yeah, he's, uh, we haven't seen him at all tonight. Regardless, Duke's done a good job in the run game in his actions. Renfrey away from center, fakes the handoff, goes to the end zone, incomplete. No penalty flag. Rankin knocked it down. Reeves was the intended receiver, fourth down. Well, Duke goes in there, two tight set, one back. And David Reeves is a big target. And credit Darian Rankin does an excellent job in coverage, knocking the ball down. You know, North Carolina now, we've seen both of these defenses leaking yards on the ground in the run game and then finding ways as, it, as the field gets condensed in the red zone to get a key stop. This will be a 20-yard field goal attempt for Ross Martin. He's two for two tonight. Hit from 28 and also hit from 30 earlier this evening. 
of the hold of Will Monday, and it's good. Duke, five for six in the red zone tonight. Like North Carolina occasionally settling for field goals, but Duke has a nice lead here at home. Get two into the BCS, sneaking in at large. No chance of that if that's the case. Clemson ends up into the conference. North Carolina to get it back here. Sean Tapley with a kickoff return. Out across the 20. He's hammered at the 22 by a host of Blue Devils. Leading the way, Kyler Brown. He's on his way to a defensive MVP honor this week. 4.20 to go in the third. 23-9 Duke. Brenner ready to come back out. He can college football. And in this great rivalry, they play for the victory bell. And Duke also playing for bowl eligibility tonight. They've only had eight trips to bowl games in their entire 100-year history. This is what they have left as far as the schedule, including tonight. You can see since 1995 when they last went to a bowl game, this is how they've done against the teams that are remaining on their schedule. That wouldn't bode well for Duke, but the way they're playing tonight, they may yeah. wrap this up. I'll tell you what, they got a bye week before they play Tech. That's an option offense. And when teams get opportunities to prep for that, they get opportunities to stop that option. Renner in trouble and sacked at the 13-yard line. Jordan DeWolf on Dijo with the sack. You know, he's had a good game all night. He's stand-up defensive end. He doesn't take the bluff. It looked like Bernard was trying to get him to hold up just long enough. Instead, he ends up with the sack. 19th sack. sack for Duke this year, which leads the ACC. Draw play, Bernard. Jordan Bias brings him down as he gets five of those yards back to the 20-yard line. So third and very long. Renner still has zero passing yards here in the second half. And North Carolina has struggled all night on third down situations. Duke's done an excellent job on this down. Pressure from the edge, stepping up in the pocket. Renner complete to Bernard. A stiff arm stop. Short of the first down. Well short by Walt Canty, the safety. You know what? That might look like just a run-of-the-mill type of a play. Walt Canty, one-on-one -on -one in space with Giovanni Bernard. He comes up from his safety position and makes this tackle short of the first down. We talk about Bernard. He's an excellent running back. He's uh, got the ability to make you miss in space. And Canty has been a sure tackler for Duke in the secondary and is able to come up with a key stop there to force North Carolina to punt it away yet again. And third down has killed the Tar Heels today. Is the third North Carolina three and out. Hibbard kicks. Connor Verdon back and calls for the fair catch at the 26 yard line. 47 yard punt. Unite, the new late night show on ESPNU. Danny Cannell, Reese Waters, Marriott Ella on it. All the latest news, sports, and a comedy twist. Unite, ESPN's first late night entertainment show, Monday at midnight on the U. So Duke going back to work here late in the third quarter. 2.21 to go in the third. They've got a 23-9 lead. And Sean Renfrey had an elbow injury three weeks ago against Wake Forest. Missed the game against Virginia. Has been solid tonight. Hands off to Thompson. Across the 30 to the 31. And you talked about it before. Cutcliffe known as a great quarterback coach. Mentored Peyton Manning at Tennessee and Eli at Ole Miss. He's done a great job with Renfrey. As you see, Thompson is slow to get up. And even with this three-headed running back attack for Duke, they don't want to lose Thompson. No, you know, we, we touched on it earlier. Kurt Roper was saying all these tailbacks, all these running backs earn their carries. And part of the reason why you get other guys established is because it's, it's a difficult it's a difficult position to stay healthy. You see right now tonight, they're very balanced in their rushing attack. Josh Sneed getting his carries up into the second level. You see Jawan Thompson, a big physical runner, finishing runs. Jayla Duncan 
getting in the end zone, all three have contributed. He's congratulated by Desmond Scott, who was a running back a year ago. All of a sudden, it looks like a wealth of talent at the running back position for Duke. We came into the game talking about well, they had two of the top receivers in the ACC, Connor Vernon and Jamison Crowder. It's been all about the running backs tonight. And on second and five, they keep it on the ground, and it's going to be a first down run for Sneed. He's not just shy of the 40. It's a nine-yard carry. Uh -oh. So a season high now for rushing yards for Duke, but now Snead is limping off the field. You know, here we are talking about the depth and all these guys getting carries. Back-to-back -back runs. Juwan Thompson goes down. Josh Snead hobbles off. You go to Jayla Duncan, a true freshman. Thank goodness for it if you're Duke right now and Kurt Roper. So Jalay Duncan, the left of Renfrey, and he'll get it. Next man up for Duke as he picks up three. Allison. Well, guys, this Duke off offense wants to make sure they keep their foot on the gas. After they had to settle for the field goal on the last drive, Sean Renfrey was not happy. He let his offense know it had some choice words. Wanted to make sure they keep the fire, keep the fight. Told his backs, which have been getting banged up here, they have to keep turning their wheels. Cutcliffe also came over, addressed the offense. His message was to be relentless. Boy, David Cutcliffe loves Sean Renfrey. Loves his leadership. Loves his intellect. Duncan again. And this is going to bring up third down at about seven. As Devontae Brown and Deion Guy combine on the stop. As we're under a minute to go here in the third quarter. You see up there in the box, Kurt Roper. And here he is right here in the middle of your screen. And all night long, he's been dialing up the right calls. And a lot of them have been on the ground. Look to go to the air, although earlier on a third and long, when they're coming off their own goal line, they were able to hit a nice draw play. I think they air it out on this third third down. Renfrey in the flat to Duncan. He's going to be stopped short. The first down, Kevin Reddick pulled him out of bounds after the four-yard pickup. Nine seconds to go in the quarter. It's been impressive, those three backs. You look at what they've picked up yardage-wise. 74 for Sneed, 64 for Thompson, 56 for Duncan. That's spreading it around. That is spreading it around. It's spreading it around on the ground. We're talking about Duke so far in the third quarter for North Carolina. Still able to squeeze out some points versus the Star Hill defense. 23 to 9, Duke perhaps one quarter away from becoming bowl eligible for the first time since 94. Hi everybody, I'm Dick Vidal. Hey, I don't care what sport it is, Duke versus North Carolina, it's awesome, baby. has dominated this series, winning 21 of the last 22 meetings, but it is Duke who is fired up going into the fourth. Leading by a couple of touchdowns. As we take a look at the Taco Bell game track, the rushing game has been very impressive for the Blue Devils. And you see the numbers, 186 yards on the ground. And that's been the story. We just knew that Duke was going to be able to attack North Carolina or at least try in the air. And so far tonight, it has been a very, really, you know, a legitimate rushing attack, one that's had success all night long that's carried Duke so, so far. It's a fake for Duke as they try to pick up the first down, and they did not. Monday was back in punt formation for the Blue Devils. Canty. Trying to pick up the first down on the fake, and they're stopped. And great field position now for North Carolina. A yep. turn of events. Yeah, we just see Duke's all jacked up. It's a quick way to end it. And you see, Walt Canty's lined up under center right here. Just takes the snap, and they go for the sneak, and they don't get the push. North Carolina looked like they were ready for it. It might have taken a little too long with Canty under center. Stepped that ball a little bit quicker. Now, Brent Renner with a short field. Yeah, it didn't seem like much of an element of surprise. Renner keeps, has some room, and gets 
inside the 45-yard line down to the 43. On a Nicky with the tackle. Well, Brent Renner's been really quiet, really most of this ball game. Only 36 yards passing. Obviously, in the run game as well is not his forte. Duke would be happy to let him run. Renner trying to pass here, pressured, and the ball pops loose. It's going to land incomplete. It was intended for Bernard. Good hit by Jordan Bias. And again, another timely blitz by Jim Knowles. We brought Kyler Brown, who ends up lighting up Bryn Renner as he delivers this. This is twice now on a screen pass where Duke is able to get in there rather quickly. You don't want him to get in there immediately. There's some timing to set these things up. That pass was high and undid what they could have gotten done in the screen. Third and six, Renner. Incomplete. No penalty flag. Cockrell, great coverage. And North Carolina can't take advantage of the field position. It's fourth down. Ross Cockrell, we talked about it. He had to play as a true freshman. And now he's getting to build on that experience. You see Larry Fedora yeah, how about because this? of the field position. Always converted 10 fourth downs. He's going to challenge Jim Knowles. And this defense has done a good job all half. Going for it on fourth and six. Duke showing blitz. And now Renner checks. Play clock under 10. Renner, man wide open in the middle of the field, caught. Ebron, he's been quiet tonight, but now a huge play for North Carolina. A 34-yard reception, first and goal, Tar Heels. You know, it's not often that you have a tight end who's matched up with a starting corner and it being advantage, but Ebron is like a wide receiver and has proven to be a weapon for him. Be quiet tonight. And he comes up huge in this North Carolina offense and a key fourth down conversion. Brennan Williams, the right tackle for North Carolina, shaken up on the play. What did you think of that play call? By Blake Anderson, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina. Uh, you, you know, Duke is challenging them. You see it right here. This is the matchup at the top of the screen. They're locked up, man. Ebert's just going to juke Butler right at the line of scrimmage. And that guy, we've talked about it. He's basically a big-bodied wide receiver. That was one of the concerns for Jim Knowles, defensive coordinator for Duke was Eric Ebert and the weapon that he is at the tight end position. Now, he was flexed out. This is Lee Butler. And you see that Brendan Williams looks like he's going to be okay. He walks off and come out for a play. But that was big. Larry Fedora once again gambling. That's 11 fourth down conversions. And Brent Renner in this offensive business in the red zone. This is the first explosive play tonight for the passing offense. Here's Bernard. Gets it inside the five, pushing toward the goal line. And he stopped just short of the end zone. And they hustle to get up to the line. Well, they run right, right behind where Brennan Williams was, showing some confidence in their offensive front. Bernard did not get there. Now, this is eerily similar for North Carolina to what we've seen from them earlier in this game as a timeout is called. An injury timeout as Kyler Brown is done. Remember earlier in the game, Larry Fedora's team had to settle for three field goals. They've had trouble finishing drives in the red zone tonight. And, and, and you and wonder, you see some of these spread type offenses. When you get down in the red zone, the field is condensed. There's less field to spread out. And you take a look at what these teams have looked like, specifically North Carolina. When they get down in the red zone, they had some difficulties versus Miami last week. Four trips to the red zone, only able to come away from the scores twice. They had an interception, had a missed field goal, and tonight, Dukes found ways to slow North Carolina down on offense once they get down in the scoring area. Kyler Brown is down for Duke. We'll check on him when we come back to Durham. Clay Matvick, Matt Stinchcomb, Allison Williams back here in Durham, North Carolina, where Duke leads 23-9. Early in the fourth quarter, North Carolina right on the doorstep. Third down goal to go after the timeout. The injury timeout. Renner to Bernard. 
Touchdown, North Carolina. The first time tonight that the Heels have been able to finish a drive in the red zone. See Giovanni Bernard able to get it in there, but well, it took a pass from Brent Renner. A gamble from Larry Fedora. And really, you know, a gamble by Duke. We're gonna we're go, gonna for, go two. for two. Now a little confusion. Let's go, double check. This is this is As they check. actually get Barth into field uh, into an extra point setup now. And it's good. 23 to 16 now. You know, Walt Canty gets stuffed on a fake punt to set up the series. Big fourth down, and Brent Renner hits Eric Eber, the tight end, for a big gainer. Giovanni Bernard's able to dive over the top of this offensive line to get the, get the screen. It's a victory bell. That's what's at stake here tonight in this great rivalry between North Carolina and Duke. Here's a picture of Duke the last time they won it. It was 2003, and the only time they won it in the last 22 meetings. There it is on the sideline. These teams will take it home tonight. Well, they, did they get to paint the bell? It looked like it was Carolina blue, did it? That little bell cradle that they got it yeah. on? Yeah. sure Duke will uh, paint over that. Paint over it. 13-14 to go. North Carolina with a touchdown drive. Giovanni Bernard putting it in the end zone. His eighth rushing touchdown of the year. Jalay Duncan for Duke. On the return, thrown down near the 25-yard line. Allison. Some irony here. You know, we talked to Coach Cutcliffe yesterday, and he said down 14 in the fourth quarter is a great place to be because one team wants the game other, over while the other gets to come out swinging, be aggressive, and throw caution to the wind. Well, wouldn't you know it, UNC down 14, and that's what Coach Fedora does. Going forward on fourth down, UNC has now scored. The question is, how will Duke respond? Remember last week, Coach Cutcliffe said they did everything well except for handle Virginia Tech when they started to rise up. They need to be better about addressing UNC scoring here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Guys. Coach Cutcliffe is looking for his team to close this one out. Big lead getaway last week. Josh Sneed dinged up earlier in the game. Doesn't look dinged up now. He's across the 40, down to the 43-yard line. A run of 19 yards for Josh Sneed. Right side, can't say enough about what they're doing. Sylvester Williams, he jets upfield, and Josh Sneed's in the secondary immediately. Again, the running game, getting it going for Duke on offense. And Sneed one more time. He's closing in on 100 yards here tonight as Travis Hughes, the weak side linebacker, makes the tackle. Sneed, I don't know if he's Gimpy again. Regardless, this running game is leaning forward into UNC's defensive front, even when it's met with some resistance at the line of scrimmage, falling forward for three and four yards. Now Shaq Powell checking into the game for Duke in the backfield. Sneed. Boy, he was hammered. Stepping up is Jabari Price, the corner, and he laid a punishing hit on the ball carrier. I was just looking at this. You know, they've got numbers. But Jabari Price, Jameson Crowder unable to deter him from getting into the internal portion of the Duke offensive front. But regardless, Duke has numbers. Right now, you get North Carolina on a previous snap. They've got six defenders in the box. Duke's got a blocking back and a runner. But they've liked those numbers. It's part of the reason why I think they're continuing to test North Carolina with the ground game. Big third down. Throwing Renfrey complete. Caught by Vernon. <laughs> to the 35-yard line, Connor Vernon, a gain of 18. Great protection by the Duke offensive front after a big play to get right back over the ball to Connor Vernon with the big catch and the big game. He's had a tough time in his career against North Carolina. But tonight he's having a big game. Four catches now for 80 yards as Jalay Duncan on that last carry picks up a couple, second down and eight.
Boy, they needed that big play. And they got it from their star receiver. And it's Duncan again. And gets close to the 30-yard line. You know, before that big play, North Carolina was starting to take over all the momentum in this football game. They closed the game to within seven points. Looked like they were ready to get the ball back, but then Vernon strikes. Yeah, and it was a key conversion there, obviously, to get that big gainer. You see the opportunities. The first half, North Carolina, you know, they've had a lot more in the plus territory. This half, still unable to close the gap. Renfrey's going to keep it. Oh, and he gets hit hard. I don't think he got the first down. I think he's about a yard short. Sean Renfrey, not known for his ability to run. He's efficient when he has to, but he doesn't take off very often. Uh, and, you know, you wonder, a healthy Brandon Kinnett in that situation, who clearly is not going to play here tonight, I think is in at quarterback in that scenario. Duke's not scared. Oftentimes, they'll have two quarterbacks in the game, and Renfrey, he really gets punished and sets up a field goal attempt. Able to get some yards, though, to make this more makeable for Ross Martin. Ross Martin from 43, his long this season from 40. Huge kick. And the freshman got it. That makes it a 10-point game as Martin is 4-4 four for four tonight. But Sean Renfrey, the Duke quarterback, got his cage rattled on the last play. Sean. Blue Devils fans are hoping he's going to be all right. He's rocking in Durham, North Carolina. Perhaps the Blue Devils 922 away from being bowl eligible. But Sean Renfrey got dinged up on the last series. Anthony Boone, the backup quarterback for the Blue Devils, is starting to warm up. He's done a nice job in relief this season when the Blue Devils have needed him. He stepped up versus Wake Forest when Renfrey was dinged and then started versus Virginia through four touchdown passes. It brings a run element to the quarterback position. But Renfrey doesn't. I'm confident Kurt Roper wants his quarterback healthy to have both of them available. Ross Martin doing a beautiful job here tonight in the kicking game for Duke. Puts it through the end zone. So now Bryn Renner down 10. Bring the offense out. We'll start at the 25. Plenty of time in this game left. In North Carolina, they got their full complement of timeouts. Duke has played very well tonight, but they know that this North Carolina team is very good late in bowl games this year. And they're very good at getting breakout plays as well. You contain them, you contain them, and then a big gainer hits you. Bernard, the catch. Good run after the catch. <laughs> And he stopped at the 34-yard line, a gain of nine for Giovanni Bernard, who has essentially been the entire offense for North Carolina. Yeah, he's certainly been the detonator. He's set off this offense with big plays. Another broken tackle for a game. Get it here. He has to cut it back up. And he's going to lunge ahead close to a first down. As Jonathan Woodruff, the defensive end, makes the stop. North Carolina picks it up. North Carolina on that previous touchdown drive and the beneficiary of a very short football field. A lot of yardage in front of them that the Duke defense can work with. Brenner complete. Big play. Ebron on his feet inside the 45. Great catch. Sheds a couple of tackles to get to the 43-yard line. First down heels. And this is Ren Renner's favorite target is Eric Ebron. Talk about the they're thin at wide receiver, but they've got Eber. They'll flex him out. He's in this slot here. Renner has to throw again, and he's going deep. Nobody home. Ebring, the intended target. He was double covered. Second down. You know, look at Eric Eber. He's a big body. Jordan Bias unable to get him to the ground. And you see just the yards after the catch. That's what it's like when you've got a big tight end that can run like a wide receiver, and he gets loose in the secondary. Now they're going to give him a blow, knowing that they're going to need him as this as this drive progresses. Both coaching staff say Ebron's got NFL written all over. Well, he looks like it tonight when he's got his opportunities. 
big hole up the middle for Romar Morris. Excellent receiver for North Carolina out of the backfield. Gets a good carry of eight yards as Canty makes the tackle. So third down and manageable for UNC on an important drive as this game's getting late. And Morris, it appears, is going to be short of the first down. Nick Sink, who got the start at defensive tackle tonight, on the stop for Duke. Fourth down. Nick Sink able to get some push versus this North Carolina offensive front. Their strength is at the guards. And he's able to get into the offensive backfield and yet again another fourth down try. Renner Easy. lunges ahead and got it. Brent Renner with the keeper. That's the second time that he's picked that up tonight. Important pickup. Down 10. Henry Fedora. His first taste of this great rivalry. Play fake. Renner stepping up. He's going to run inside the 30. Slides down and takes a hit at the 26. And now the North Carolina fans who are here, yeah. they, want a, they want a penalty flag, and indeed they get one. Yeah, you know, when a quarterback's giving himself up, you can't go after him. As they're saying, look, you know, I can see it. I can see whatever yards that I'm getting. You see some of these North Carolina men taking linemen taking some exception to the way that play ended. So, you know, taking a free run at their quarterback, that's a bad penalty. So already you see. After the play, personal foul. Number 47, 15 yards, automatic first down. David Helton, the weak side linebacker. Talk about Brent Renner. Yeah, it's Jordan, Jordan yep. Bias, it looks like. It is Bias, yep. He's coming in there, wants to make a play, but quarterback slides and gives himself up. That's a personal foul, three yards, automatic first down. You can see the frustration of David Cutcliffe. You get the fourth down conversion. Another big pass to Eric Ebert. That clock ran off. A little bit of confusion now, but then once again, Brent Renner being opportunistic. The protection held up, but there was such a void in the middle of the defense, he took advantage of it with an attack on the personal foul. Giovanni Bernard, great patience, takes it to the outside and is stopped at the seven by Butler. But boy, did Bernard stutter step and wait for his opportunity. One well, of the great runners, he's got good vision, but you see it there. He just gives opportunity for Travis Bond, his point guard, to come around. Bernard now, 37 rushing yards. Play fake to him, to the end zone, touchdown! Bryn Renner, his first TD pass tonight. And it's Sean Tapley with the catch. And you can see Larry Fedora saying, let's go for one. To make this a three-point game. Casey Barth coming on. An important extra point attempt. And North Carolina has pulled to within three with 6.28 to go. Another gamble, and it pays off on fourth down. You see Brent Renner sticking it in there for a score. Two straight possessions that end a North Carolina touchdown. North Carolina with some momentum now late in this game, down three. Brent Renner, his first touchdown pass of the night. Look at this free access. Bias and Canty's all the way in the box. And you can see Tapley just come right in here into the void. Some confusion unaccounted for. The big open area, free access into the end zone. Renner just sticks it in there for the score. Renner came into the night 10th nationally in touchdown passes thrown. That's his first this evening, his 16th of the year. You know, Larry Fedora talked about Brent Renner. He threw 26 touchdowns last year, set a record in North Carolina. Says, if you just got to protect the football, distribute the football. But tonight, some key fourth downs and big pitches. Derek Eber, he's come in. 
Lee Butler. Good return out across the 30. Ball and Klein. Talk about a clash in styles in that ball game. Klein and Geno Smith. As Jalei Duncan takes the hand up. You got to think that uh, Colin Klein now might be the front runner in the Heisman chase. Well, part of the reason is because of the way Colin Klein runs physically between the tackles, much like what Jalei Duncan just did. I mean, I got to tell you something. The way that this kid as a freshman has run the football tonight, blowing up Darian Rankin, you can't say enough about these running backs for Duke. Second down and five. And it is Duncan, but this time not much operating room up the middle. A gain of one, so third and four for Duke. Well, goes without saying, it's a big possession for Duke. We've Huge. seen him, you know, with the fake, fake, the fake punt that didn't work out, led to a touchdown, and then again, North Carolina able to get another score. They're clinging to a three-point lead, and North Carolina has done this before. They've been down in games. Versus Louisville springs to mind, and then they are able to rally back. This offense is perfectly capable of bouncing back. Duke needs to get this third down conversion. Renfrey throws. Almost intercepted. That route was jumped by Kevin Reddick, and there would have been nobody in front of him. Fourth down, Duke will have to kick. And you know what? I think Sean Renfrey is going to want this one back. Not because it was, a, it was a potential pick necessarily, but he had his favorite target, maybe the best target you could have in the ACC, and Connor Vernon over the ball, over the middle of the formation, with first down yardage. As it is, Duke unable to get the conversion, and you took it back to a dangerous offense. And a dangerous Giovanni Bernard standing at the North Carolina 20. Will Monday leading the ACC in punting, and he booms one here. Fair catch called for inside the 10. Great kick by the redshirt freshman, Will Monday. Kevin Reddick, and look, he's trying to get the ball to David Reeves, his, his tight end. Reddick just undercuts that route, and he's lucky that wasn't a pick six. You can see how North Carolina they do an excellent job in the second half. They stand on the gas offensively. They'll find ways to shut people down defensively. We see tonight, they scored 17 points. Duke only able to come up with field goals. And it's allowed North Carolina to close that scoring gap. It was largely established in the first half by Duke. After the 51-yard punt, North Carolina sets up at the nine. Bernard wrapped up at the line of scrimmage and pulled down. An impressive stop for Ananicki. Kenny Ananicki, the senior out of Ohio. Second and nine. is complete to Ebron. And he gets it to the 15, about four yards short of the first down. Austin Gamble on the tackle. And Larry Fedora, big third down and four here. Again, you see North Carolina, Larry Fedora able to stretch this Duke defense more. We talked about how they were starting to compress the box. Eric Ebron and these completions have forced them to spread out more. Under four minutes now. Winner time complete to the 25 and a first down. Sean Tapley, the 10 yard pickup, they'll move the chains. Big conversion. Again, in front of Lee Butler, you see Bryn Renner, who's been quiet most of the night. Really, very little impact from the quarterback position, starting to make his presence felt. Renner again, a nice clean pocket. And again, he's complete out near the 40 yard line. And it's Ebron again. He's impressive. Give him 14 on that play. And you see the tempo now. They you get a couple of big spots, and now they're winding the clock. Opportunity to get right back over the ball and keep Duke on their heels. The teams with all their timeouts. Renner, tons of time. Man wide open. Caught at the 40-yard line. Eric Heisman. Ball comes out. Still loose. Picked up and running the end zone by Bernard. 
Giovanni Bernard, Johnny on the spot. And the Tar Heels take the lead. We talk about this North Carolina offense. Offense, spread, a balanced attack, and then sometimes it just takes a good bounce. And Eric Eber was a mismatch. He was a concern for this Duke defense. Jim Knowles knew it. And he has proven to be a nightmare for Duke in trying to match up with that big target. Thirty to twenty-six, North Carolina. There was some confusion on the coverage, and you could see Austin Gamble. He gets knocked off a little bit. C.J. France is underneath. They're able to get Highsmith, and it just gets hatcheted out. Ron Bias was able to come over there and get it out. Ross Cockrell had a he shot. He did. Yes, he did. And he knows it too. And it's. That, that is one of those things where, okay, David Cutcliffe talked about this. Can this team get up off the mat? Versus Stanford, they put the ball away after their first offensive possession, a punt return for a touchdown. You jump out to a lead versus Virginia Tech, an interception sets up an easy score, and somehow you're not able to come back, and North Carolina and Brent Renner know that they've had to fight and scratch and claw their way back into this ball game with the bell at stake. There's the victory bell going to the winner, and right now North Carolina has the lead by four with 3.12 to go. The Heels with 14 unanswered points. They've got their first lead since it was three to nothing back in the first quarter. Now we'll see indeed what Duke has in its tank. Let's go, let's go. Lee Butler. Let's go, let's go. Destroyed at the 13 yard line. As we go to the studio and Matt. By five, yeah. Now that's closer than a lot of people expected. Meanwhile, here, Duke has the football, but they've got a long field down four with just over three minutes to go. Renfrey. Fires complete as the tight end Blakeney. And he's going to get five. Boston wraps him up. Duke has all of its timeouts remaining. North Carolina also with three left. And there is David Cutcliffe. He's got to be thinking to himself, man, we were close. We just needed to close it out. Still might be hope. Renfrey being chased. it away. Kareem Martin in pursuit as we go down to Allison. Well, Clay, this Carolina sideline absolutely erupted, as you would imagine, after Gio scored that touchdown. And since he came off the field, there's been a parade of high fives, one of which was Bryn Renner. He came over and said, hey, if you didn't get it, buddy, I was. I was right behind you. Also, Bryn, making sure everybody is locked in and prepared for the situation when they do take the field again. So he said, hey, it's either four minutes or we're down three. Be mentally prepared. Thank you, Allison. Pressure. Getting rid of it is Renfrey. Vernon! Across the 45 to the 47. That's a gain of 29. And you see there's belief on the sideline for Duke, certainly in the stands. Connor Vernon, one of the best targets you can have in the ACC. And it's not like he lacks for speed. Able to get the big gainer to get him close to midfield. Renfrey in the flat, Duncan. And he'll be stopped at the 49. Reddick on the tackle. That's a pickup of a couple. As the clock continues to wind under two minutes. And now Jalay Duncan is down for the Blue Devils. Boy, every single running back, with the exception of Shaq Powell for Duke, has been down on the turf at one point or another. At least Duncan able to Get off under his own power this time. Sneed checks in for Duke. And free, plenty of time. Almost intercepted at the 50. And that should have been as Dion Guy saw that coming right at him. It's going to bring up third down and eight. 
Once again, you know, protection held up fantastically well. Dion Guy in his hybrid position dropping into coverage. I think the Winfrey saw him. North Carolina brings four. Another completion to Vernon. First down and more as Duke is into plus territory to the 36. A gain of 15 for Connor Vernon. Two big gainers, and it comes as no surprise. Connor Vernon being the key target, able to get him into the safeties as they play too deep where they wanted to attack North Carolina. To the outside, Blakeney the catch. Banging his way close to another first down. And indeed, he's got it. You see Duke pounded on the ground and now getting into a rhythm. Renfrey hasn't had the attempts that he typically has in this ball game. Certainly not the ones we would have anticipated. And now you can see on this drive, settling into the passing attack and able to get it downfield. Now the North Carolina sideline calls for a timeout. That is their first called timeout of the half. Two remaining for the Heels, all three for Duke. A field goal does the Tar Heels no good here, even though the field goal unit has been outstanding for the Blue Devils tonight. They need a touchdown. They've got a minute and a half to work with, and all of their timeouts remain. Yeah, right now, sitting on it, you know, Lay Duncan goes down, gives him a little bit of a break to regroup. Right now, North Carolina is saying, let's call timeout and see if we can't regroup. We've got a four-point lead. It takes a touchdown to go ahead. As you said, field goal does us no good, so we're defending the goal line. There's first downs that can be gotten. But right now, Connor Vernon, who's been quiet typically versus North Carolina, the previous three games that he's had, and now he comes alive right when the Duke offense needs him the most. And he's making North Carolina pay as he comes all the way across their defensive formation and gets yards after the catch. Sneed is in there on first down. He gets the carry. And get one as Martin wraps him up. And a timeout called for here by the Blue Devils. Playing for the Bell and Bowl eligibility. David Cutcliffe had Duke so close in 2009 that they lost their last four games. Not only trying to win that trophy, but get this team bowl eligible for the first time in 18 years. 1994 was the last time that Duke made a bowl trip. Went to the Hall of Fame Bowl, lost to Wisconsin that year. Now, if they don't get it done tonight, there's still plenty of opportunities. However, since that last bowl trip, this is how they fared against the remaining teams on their schedule. Yeah, it doesn't look good. And you look at that since 1995, but since David Cutcliffe has been at Duke, he is winless versus the remaining teams on this schedule. Well, that doesn't bode well. You've got a tremendous opportunity right now in this ball game, and they have it right here to regain a lead. They had to lead most of the night. Giovanni Bernard on a fumble recovery to go ahead for the touchdown, but a scoring opportunity here for Duke to regain. From the 23, second down, pass is complete. That's Crowder. He's whipped down well short of the first down. Picks up four, so third down here for Duke. As we're coming up on a minute to go, third down at six. See North Carolina scrambling to get lined up. Duke stayed over the ball after that completion. Out to the flat, man wide open. Nice move by Duncan, tripped up very close to the first down marker. Boy, this is going to depend on the spot. It is going to come. What a great tackle by Jabari Price. You know, similar to the tackle on Giovanni Bernard by Walt Canty. Get out in space. Well, that's a difficult tackle to make, especially to keep him in front of him for a negligible gain. You see there, we've seen this before this season, Clay. It's amazing how games of this magnitude, bowl eligibility on the line for Duke, a rivalry where they're, they've lost 21 of their last 22, and it comes down to a couple of inches and a spot on a swing pass. They pull that chain tight, and it's a first down for Duke. And it's the second effort, I think, by Duncan that's able to get it done. Jabari Price closes all over the legs, and Duncan 
able to keep that knee up just enough to where the ball advanced past the mark. And Duke, right here, right now, with the opportunity to close this game out with 43 seconds left on the clock. And they've got two timeouts. The team's got a little break after that timeout for the measurement. The power run to Duncan, and it's a good one. Clock moving, 30 seconds to go, and a timeout. Duke calls the timeout. You can see what they've done in the red zone tonight. They need a touchdown. A field goal does them no good. Well, they need six right here, and you, they went to the power scheme. Dave Harding, the left guard, do everything. Find those offense better than anybody at this point. Does a good job of pulling over to the edge. You see this North Carolina team, the entire team, rallying around Larry Fedora. They know what's at stake here. They got their first road win versus Miami. Last week, you see now in this battle versus Duke, Duke's led most of this ball game. And it took one of the wackiest plays of the season, really, to go ahead and get the lead. And then finally, you know, Brent Renner started to get hot on the series. Eric Ebron emerged as the primary target that he's been all season long. A couple of big completions. He hits Highsmith. And what could have been a recovery for Kako ends up being a touchdown for Giovanni Bernard. He scores every which way. He's a great ball carrier, and he's a great guy covering down on fumbles. We'll see what Duke draws up after the timeout. Second down at 4, 28 seconds left. Duke has a timeout left. Bowl eligibility on the line for Duke tonight. Renfrey. To the outside, incomplete. Duncan slipped through his hands, so it'll bring up third down and four. North Carolina content brought five. Mitchell spins Duncan around. It's a difficult catch. He had some heat on that football. You can still get a first down. It's obviously four down territory. They've got opportunity to stop the clock. As you see right here, Sean Winfrey, one back backfield. This tighter condensed space when you get down in the red zone, the reads have to be clean. And it is Duncan. He's going to be stopped short of the first down by Boston. A couple of yards shy. You know, that, that running lane that was open so often in the first half for Duke right up the middle between the tackles. North Carolina has done a much better job in the second half. Hey, you know, it's given them opportunity. Look, when you've got an in line to play against. We talk how they play too deep often. They spend more time closer to the box. And now, you know, you got Sean Renfrey. He's your primary quarterback. I'm surprised you know, a little bit with some of these red zone snaps. We haven't seen more Anthony Boone. With its fourth down play, fourth and some yardage. And I'd be shocked if we don't get Boone in here to at least have a multiple threat at the quarterback position. Duke has got a timeouts. 19 seconds to go. This is the biggest play of the ball game coming up. And again, Brandon Kinnett, we have not seen him tonight. He might be the guy we would see taking the snap in this position. Renfrey does come out. And I don't see Boone out there. Keep in mind, too, they empty the backfield. If they get the first down, no timeouts left. They're going to have to get right back over the football if they don't get in the end zone here. Renfrey has time, throws, caught! Jamison Crowder, touchdown Duke! One of the biggest plays in Duke history. Three-point lead. Duke 
They get down there on the back of Connor Vernon. Sean Rinfrey stays in the game on a fourth down. Great protection. Jamison Crowder climbs the ladder in traffic and comes down with the go-ahead touchdown. And look at David Cutcliffe. That's relief. And Fedora can't believe it. You know, they go ahead on the most unlikely of plays. Larry Fedora can't believe it. Giovanni Bernard, he covers down on a Highsmith fumble, and he's there to be the beneficiary of that. Gets a touchdown to go ahead. Jamison Crowder, Connor Vernon, and what's been mostly a running game all, all night long for Duke. And then their two big targets come up when they needed it the most on the final drive. And for those of you around the country who have seen Duke get to five wins and thought, yeah, they haven't played anybody, they most likely won't get to a bowl game this year. When the team needed a big drive, they put together their longest drive of the year, 14 plays to go ahead. Things are different in Durham, North Carolina under David Cutcliffe. Well, they, they believe now, and, and they've had time four years to change some of the culture, some of the mentality, and they're building towards being consistently competitive. They stay away from Bernard. It's Romar Morris near the sideline. And North Carolina has 11 seconds to work with. And they have two timeouts remaining. Wrangler, five-star player of the game. The man of the moment, Jamison Crowder. Potential game-winning touchdown reception. Got to throw that in there. Potential game-winning touchdown reception. Still 11 seconds on the clock. North Carolina's got timeouts. 11 seconds left, though. No time likely to run maybe two plays, depending how long this first one, first attempt takes. They can quit timeout if it's, a, if it's a completed pass, and they're unable to get out of bounds for one more shot. Renner, deep down the right sideline. It's hauled in, but out of bounds. Incomplete. Eric Highsmith. Is covered well by Tony Foster. Second down, four seconds on the clock. Look at this Duke sideline. You know, look at this crowd. You know, part of the reason David Cutcliffe wanted to play this game earlier in the year was so, so that the fans could see this matchup. It usually fell on fall break. Nobody was going to the ball game. Well, they're here tonight to see a good one. And North Carolina is going to use one of its two remaining timeouts. Last win for Duke against North Carolina came in 2003. It's the last time that Duke was able to take that trophy, the victory belt, which goes all the way back to 1948. It was the first time that that trophy came into play. But these two teams have been meeting since 1888. One of the fiercest rivalries in college sports. It mostly makes headlines come basketball season. But David Cutcliffe is determined to make this a great football rivalry again. In recent years, it's been dominated by North Carolina. Well, you know, here at Durham last night, Midnight Madness for Duke basketball. Well, that's kind of the watermark event on the calendar. Oh, and by the way, we got a football game tomorrow versus North Carolina. This just shows what David Cutcliffe has built towards. This is something for the fans of Duke and the ACC to pay attention to the Blue Guns. Final play of the game. It is caught. Prevent defense by Duke. Bernard to Brenner. Another lateral. Now Lineman getting involved. And Duke has done it. Bowl eligible for the first time since 1994. And they're going to storm the field in Durham. Likely done this 
but it's even sweeter because it's North Carolina that they've beaten. Well, they're right down the road. You know, you got three teams in the ACC right on top of each other. Their fans probably eat at the same Waffle House. Now they've got something <laughs> to brag about. Finally getting them, this monkey off their back. Let's go down to Allison Williams. Guys, a, a celebratory scene down here. Coach Cutcliffe, what does it mean to you to get this win tonight? Well, since the decision I made to fake that punt almost cost us, it means even more. But uh, I could not be happier for a group of great young men. That's incredible. They beat North Carolina and get bowl eligible all in one night. Congratulations go to those coaches and those players. What a job they did. How did they get it done tonight? You had the 14 point lead, UNC comes back and then you put together the longest drive of the year to win this thing. You know, I told you that we would have to answer to a good team. We answered to a good team in a very big way. What a drive. What was the call fourth and two on the five for the ball game? Well, we, it's, it's a double in with a guy running the back of the end line. We also have Connor Vernon if they go man on the other side on the fade. Sean decided to go strong. Jamison Crowder, what a football player. Bowl eligible for the first time since 1994. You beat UNC at home for the first time since 1988. Put this into perspective for me. Well, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming for us. It's our fifth year, but we have closed the gap. We have worked hard for this. Now, hopefully, this makes and helps us move forward. That's the way a coach thinks. I want to take this and move forward. Coach, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you, Alex. And this is going to answer your question, Matt. They are painting <laughs> the victory bell dark blue. All right, Matt, Tom, and Jason in the studio. We hope to be back with more reaction for now. Back to you after a great win here in Durham for Duke.